Not every day a girl outside the aerospace community like me could attend this creative science festival thingy, but here I was, all thanks to my genius boyfriend Mike, who just got accepted into MIT's aerospace engineering program. This is all really interesting. So great that Mike brought me here. Hey, you ruined my project. Who are you? Sorry, I, I'm Mike's, Mike? I can't believe he's talking to another girl when his girlfriend is in trouble here. The girl followed Mike and immediately fixed the model I just broke. Such an unfortunate brain behind her flashy clothes. Shh, keep it down. She's Mike's girlfriend. Really? Our valedictorian is into airheads? Huh? I thought Mike and Liana were a thing. Liana, the pretty girl who just fixed a freaking spacecraft model in a split second is being paired with my boyfriend? I'm Chloe, by the way. Sorry, I didn't introduce myself sooner. I just, ugh, never felt so self-conscious before. Mike and I have been together since high school. Back then, I was popular and had many boys chasing me. Everyone seemed amazed that a girl like me was with a nerd like him. But now, Mike's already an intern at NASA despite being only a freshman. Looks like he's a celebrity among his peers. And I was just his brainless girlfriend. For the first time ever, I felt like I had no place being such an elite student's girlfriend. I couldn't stop thinking about what happened at the science festival, so I decided to talk about it in my talk show, Bubble Buzz. Although I didn't show my face, I had heaps of listeners and every time the show was on, they flooded my comments section with excitement. Welcome back, my friends. So today's topic is, can a person's heart change when they go to college? I have a friend, Sally. She's been with her boyfriend for two years, 10 months and 21 days. But now he's gone to college in another state, living among new friends and new girls. Should she be worried that she'll become old news? Obviously, out of sight, out of mind, your friend should dump him before he does. No matter how good a relationship is, it can't escape the three-year curse. The three-year thing is real. All high school romances are doomed in the real world. Mike and I had been together for almost three years. Was this three-year curse really hitting us? Every comment seemed to believe it, while user Twinkle Star seemed to think this whole curse was silly. Curses don't exist. Relationships aren't easy. Both partners have to be willing to make an effort in their long-term relationship. Two years or ten years, it's irrelevant. Why does someone as serious as Twinkle Star listen to my show anyway? Since my early days hosting the show, this person always comments with confusing and boring quotes. I'm sure the curse was not a silly thing at all. Whether it was my three-year friendship with my first best friend Ella, or my parents divorcing after three years of marriage, the three-year milestone was real. Actually, I do know one couple who beat the curse. They're my grandparents. Grandpa's rather a cold and reserved person who only had eyes for his wife. So I asked Grandma what the secret to their successful relationship was. First, be grateful for your partner and not take love for granted. Second, know him better than you know yourself. Third, learn to forgive and apologize. Was that it? That wasn't exactly helpful. Our relationship was in a life or death situation and I needed to really do something. Right that moment, someone appeared in the kitchen and I couldn't believe it. My sister Mindy. I hadn't seen her in ages since she moved out with dad. I explained my fears to Mindy and she seemed to understand exactly why I was so concerned. Don't worry, sis. I'll stay here for a while so I can help you two overcome this curse and reignite your passion. First of all, as Mike's the biggest nerd I know, you need to appear more academic. Taking Mindy's advice, I gave myself this academia aesthetic, then went to see Mike at the amusement park. Oh, look, there he is. Huh? Chloe? Um, you look different. Since when did you wear glasses? I've, um, always worn them, Mike. You must not have noticed. I stay up late last night to watch a physics documentary. Now it's time to impress Mike with my knowledge about how water fountains actually work without electricity and run solely on gravity. How the fat in ice cream impacts the freezing point and I could taste the fat droplets. And how g-force and inertia were taken into account when mechanics made roller coasters for the thrill. But he didn't seem impressed at all. Chloe, you're not yourself today. Are you okay? I'm not okay. I've been wiggling my foot at you for ages, but you never noticed my undone laces. You didn't let me try your ice cream first, as you always do, and you didn't notice the effort I put into learning all this sciencey stuff for you. I'm sorry. I have this big project on my mind, and... Mike Jenkins, you've changed. The Mike I know and love was attentive and wouldn't let me walk around with untied shoes. You don't love me anymore. It all got too much for me, so I hurried off. Well, as quickly as I could with my shoelaces flailing. 
As soon as I got home, I phoned Mindy and told her everything. I was so lucky to have my big sis. OMG, he did what? It sounds like he just doesn't care about you anymore. Do you think? Um, maybe... Maybe he was just... No. If he cared, he would have come after you. Instead, he let you walk on dangerous sneakers. Mindy was right. Mike grew cold on me. This three-year curse was real. Now what should I do? There's only one thing. You'll have to test him. I've been sitting here for the past hour and Mike hasn't... Here he comes. This was Mindy's idea. Faking a car malfunction and calling Mike for help. Wow, you're so good. I'd still be stranded here alone without you. You could have asked someone else or called a garage. There wasn't even anything wrong with... It doesn't matter. But you're my boyfriend. Yes, your very busy boyfriend who lives in a different state. Anyway, I got a dash, and we'll have to take a rain check on next week. I have a lot on my plate. Then Mike left, leaving me more afraid of losing him than ever. As if he just left. His new environment changed him even more than I thought. Chloe, you have to infiltrate his space now before you lose him forever. So I went sneaking into Mike's dorm room and transformed it from nerdy to romantic chic. I hear footsteps. I better hide. I can't wait for him to see it. There's Mike, but, huh? Who's with him? Oh, wow. Romantic much? Then the other person started taking their clothes off. I leaped out of the closet ready to tackle this man-stealer to the ground, but hold on a second. That's actually a man. Mike's roommate, Gus? Chloe, um, what are you doing here? I'm sorry. I just wanted to surprise you and, and ask you to come on a date with me today, tomorrow, whenever you're free. I told you I'm busy this week. I have an inspection tomorrow. So, you mean I'm bothering you? You don't need me anymore? Here, you can use my ID card and go with Mike to the inspection. Make it a hot date. That's very kind of you. Thank you so much. One way or another, my infiltration mission was a success. Hehehe. <laughs> the next day, I came to this technical area with Mike and just stuck to him, not knowing what else I was supposed to do. Chloe, don't touch anything, okay? Mike, there you are. You have to come and see this. She dragged him off, and did she just smirk at me? Ugh, what an awful pick-me girl. She was obviously trying to separate us. No way was I gonna let her get away with that. I'd show them all that I deserve to be with him. While Liana's by herself walking around with a VR headset, I came to tell her to keep her hands off my boyfriend. Oh, there you are. Stay away from Mike. Little do you know that he has a girlfriend. You're just a clingy airhead that he's too polite to break up with. I'm the perfect girl for him, not you. I, I'm the most influential radio host on social media, and a third wheel like you call me an airhead? I'll make sure everyone knows what a horrible person you are. Really, so scary. As if I'll be worried about those pathetic gossip girls. How dare she? I pushed her, and suddenly, smash. Her headset broke into pieces on the floor. Oh no, Mike told me not to touch anything. What are you doing here? What happened? I'm so sorry, Chloe. I know that you're not okay with this whole thing, but I'm Mike's teammate and we have to interact a lot. Nothing is going on between us. You're overreacting. Then she ran away in tears like she wasn't at fault. She's lying. I didn't say that. She said she wants. Chloe, enough. I'm too busy to worry about what chaos you're going to cause next. I think we should take a break. He took the ID pass off me, leaving me feeling like my whole world had crumbled. After crying an ocean of tears, I decided to make this right. I threw away my ego and texted him first. But before I hit send, I received a message from Mike saying he was sorry and we would have a trip to celebrate our three-year anniversary. This meant we weren't over and the curse wasn't true. Ooh, I needed to figure out which outfits to bring. I got everything packed and ready for our vacation of a lifetime. It was gonna be so romantic. But all of a sudden, Liana rushed to us and flung her arms around Mike. My pet dog, Nova, she's, she's passed away. I can't be alone right now. I'd rather die. That lying party pooper. Poor Mike didn't know what to say, so she just jumped in the back seat without my permission. No problem. The more, the merrier. I'll invite my sister to join us too. Mindy proved to be super useful, always interjecting whenever Liana approached Mike. But Liana just became more and more shameless. She glued herself to Mike and had the audacity to lie down next to him like I was invisible and even ate his ice cream. Worse still, my oblivious boyfriend didn't seem bothered at all. She's more cunning than I thought. You need to step up your game. 
It was such a beautiful night, but that third wheel Liana was buzzing around Mike like a mosquito. Then she started talking about physics stuff, and now he's so caught up in their conversation, I may as well have disappeared. Hmm, how could I make Liana see Mike loves me, not her? Well, I wasn't sure if he loves me anymore. Chloe, 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 you long for attention so badly you're willing to hurt yourself. She's already hurt because of you. This is her special three-year anniversary, and you invited yourself like how you've always wormed your way in. I bet you don't even have a dog. I diverted my gaze from a fake crying Liana to a confused-looking Mike. Chloe, what are you trying to do? I'm worried you've lost your passion for me because we're at the three-year mark. We have different interests, and I can't help but feel insecure about us. If you keep acting like this... Well, I just don't know. I've been thinking about our future, too, and I've decided it's time for us to... Oh, no, no, no! This isn't happening! I think I'm pregnant! We got back two days ago, and Mike still hadn't contacted me. This curse had caught up with me, and I lost him for good. I just wish I hadn't lied about the baby. Then maybe our breakup wouldn't have been so awkward. This called for retail therapy. I stepped outside and saw Mike with a massive suitcase. Chloe, I've abandoned the project and dropped out of college. I'm going to take care of you. Both of you. Mike scurried around the house to make it pregnant woman friendly. He threw out all junk food, coffee, and even mayonnaise. Also, my high heels were packed away and Mozart was played everywhere in the house. Apparently, it'll make the baby a genius. We were going to have the perfect, happy family life. But when I went to my room to get my laptop for my next radio show, I couldn't find it anywhere. I asked Mike and he said, I packed it up with your high heels, makeup, books, and put them all in storage. You don't need any distractions. Just me, you, and the baby from now on. No more radio, studying, or friends. We can have a bunch of kids and grow old in this house. What? This wasn't what I wanted. Neither of us should have boring, unfulfilling lives or give up our dreams, right? I might not have my laptop, but I still had my phone. Welcome back. Today's topic is my friend Sally, again. She lied about being pregnant so her boyfriend wouldn't leave her. Should she keep lying or tell the truth? This time, Twinkle Star appeared again. I know she's always been a brave girl who isn't afraid of admitting her own faults and correcting her mistakes. She should tell her boyfriend the truth and explain how much she loves him. Hmm, sounds oddly specific. Who's this person? Actually, Bubble Buzz, we know each other. Before I could ask him anything else, Twinkle Star went offline. Whoever that was, I think they were right. So I went downstairs to talk to Mike, only he wasn't there. Instead, Mindy jumped out of nowhere holding a pregnancy test and a bottle of Coke. I just need to dunk this in here and the plus sign will show up clear as day in case Mike has any doubt about the baby. No need to. I'm going to tell him the truth. Are you sure about that? What if Mike gets mad? I stopped and thought about it. No, as scary as it was, I couldn't do this anymore. I was looking out for Mike by telling him the truth. Where was he? He had to be around here somewhere. Liana, why was she here with Mike? Mike, I'm sorry, but Chloe's not pregnant. She admitted on her radio show. You deserve to be with someone who wouldn't make up such awful lies. Someone like me. Oh no, I lost the chance to tell him firsthand. Now Mike would never talk to me ever again. Chloe, wait. I couldn't turn around and bear the disappointment in his eyes. I couldn't blame anyone, any third wheel or curse for destroying my relationship. Hey there, I know this is an unscheduled show, but I wanted to talk to y'all. That girl I talked about yesterday, Sally, well, she's me. I faked being pregnant to keep my relationship, but my boyfriend hates me now. I was so terrified of this three-year curse that I became this jealous monster. Mike even dropped out because of me. I'm so selfish for expecting him to spend every minute of his day with me. He needs his own life too. We both do. It's the time apart that makes our time together more exciting. And our love more passionate. Now we've broken up and it's all my fault. I stopped to catch my breath. Who told you I wanted to break up? Didn't, didn't you say you thought carefully about our future and made a decision? You know what, after all your silly shenanigans, including faking your pregnancy, I'm still madly in love with you. So the decision I made was, Chloe Ruth Evanson, you're crazy, kooky, and one of a kind. I can't stand the thought of not having you in my life. Will you marry me? Yes! But, Mike, after our engagement, you should continue your studies, projects, internship, and whatnot. You don't have to stay by my side all the time. What? I thought you'd like that. We can be together all day and make enough babies for a soccer team, right? Relax, I'm just kidding. I knew you were lying about the baby all along. Your grandpa told me. 
Turns out, Twinkle Star was none other than my grandpa, who saw that I needed some guidance and tried to give me objective advice. Mike only went along with the lie to tease me. Hmm, who knew my nerdy boyfriend could be so playful? Or should I say, my fiancé? Hey, I'm Connor, and I'm currently taking a well-deserved break from studying to hang out with my friends. I go to college at the Georgia Institute of Tech, and I'm sure to be a top-notch architect one day soon. Now I just have one thing to deal with, then I can properly enjoy my night off. Oh, here she is. Connor, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to hurt you, but sorry. We should stop seeing each other. Ah, well, every ending is a new beginning. <laughs> Cheers. I was the master of getting girlfriends I'm tired of to break up with me. It was great. As this way, no one could ever accuse me of being a bad boy. Ah, <sighs> what to do now? I reluctantly had to find a new challenge then. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to turn this in. Um, that's okay. Just trying to find one more paper. Uh, um, what's your name? <laughs> I'm Connor. Hi. Hmm, her sparkling eyes, her shiny hair, her soft hands. But ugh, why was suddenly some nerd dragging me away from the hot girl and into a corner? Before I could ask him what was going on, he started waving a photo of this girl in my face. So it turns out this dude is called Patrick, and the girl in the photo is Paige, his girlfriend. Their parents are both influential sorts and organize their whole engagement. Sounds great, right? I mean, she's pretty cute. But no, he wanted me to find a way to make Paige break up with them. I've heard a lot about you. I, I need your help. I can't do this myself. <laughs> huh? Sure, I get it. A real man will never be the one to break up first. I might be able to help, but first, let's see what kind of person she is. The conversation started to become super serious. From the sound of it, this page girl was a genuine, good-natured girl with a vulnerable side. So this needed to be handled with extra care, so that there wouldn't be any awkward family provocations for my clients. Hmm, perhaps... Nah, this way wouldn't work. Neither would that way. I was about to give up when suddenly Patrick stacked a pack of money, approximately a thousand dollars on the table. Help me, then it's all yours. Whoa, that was a lot of money to me. It would get me the magnificent PS5 of my dreams. <sighs> Besides, with my charm and handsome looks, I could make Paige fall in love with me and leave Patrick in no time. Genius! My debut had to be spectacular, so I looked online and hired some people pretending to be thugs to block Paige's path. Then I'd waltz in and rescue her. The plan was all set, so I leisurely walked to the rendezvous spot, but... Oh, no. Who knew those guys were real thugs? They threatened us, asked us to hand over all our belongings, then forced us to go to some abandoned warehouse. Oh, my God. The $1,000 was so not worth losing my life for. Yes, I was somewhat afraid, but my flirtatious instinct kicked in, and I turned to Paige and started talking to her. Oh, man, she's super sweet. And I notice that when she talks about something that interests her, she crinkles her nose. She's so cute, but most of all, she's really smart. Why, you ask? Because just an hour later, the cops showed up and arrested the thugs. Turns out, before Paige handed over her belongings, she quickly texted the thug's license plate to a friend and asked her to call the cops. Phew! And, luckily for me, thanks to this destiny meeting, I got a little more information about her and learned that Paige was planning to learn Spanish to major in tourism there. But there's one more important thing. That is, I think, I have a crush on her. She's not like any other girl I've met before. I want to win her heart, truly, not just because of the plan. It will be the best of both worlds. Patrick gets to be free of Paige, as requested. But she won't end up a lovelorn girl because she'll have a new handsome boyfriend by her side. Yep, that'll be me. <laughs> there was just one problem. In all the commotion of the day, I'd forgotten to ask Paige for her number. Oops. I had asked Patrick for it and then texted her, but sadly didn't receive a response. Hmm, I needed to be smart about this, so I decided to pretend to be a Spanish tutor. Yeah, I can't speak Spanish, but with my charm, that's no big deal, right? I created a flashy profile and told Patrick to pretend to surf and accidentally find me. Then show Paige. And so, ding! Hola, yo soy Professor Connor. But wait, sheesh! If only I'd studied Spanish harder in high school. And now the extent of my Spanish were just a few words I'd picked up from binge-watching Money Heist. So I just copied down Spanish lessons off YouTube and taught these to Paige. I don't know if it's because of my teaching skills or my charisma, but Paige seemed to think I was legit. 
However, my flirting tricks weren't going so well. I knew she liked me. I mean, who wouldn't like me? Besides, she gave me these cute looks and laughed at my jokes. Our chemistry was undeniable. So when I reached over and placed my hand on top of hers, I felt sparks fly. But then she gave me this awkward look and moved her hand away. She liked me, right? So why was she acting like this? I never failed at flirting. Feeling frustrated, I was trudging my way up the street when, huh? Was that Patrick happily holding hands with a girl? I recognized the long hair. It was Paige. Ugh, why can't she drop her lousy boyfriend already? And why won't she date me instead? I was about to leave, but the more I thought about it, the more resentful I became. So I bribed a little boy to run up to Paige and say, Why aren't you with Connor, you cheater? Mean, huh? But <laughs> Patrick would be pleased as he now had a legitimate excuse to break up with her anyway. But when the girl turned around, I realized that she wasn't Paige. The poor girl looked completely dumbfounded. Patrick started yelling at her and pulling on her arm so hard she almost fell over. Huh? Where's the nerd Patrick? And that wasn't cool at all. Then he raised his hand to hit her, but I zoomed in front of him. Stop! No reason to hit a woman, bro! Patrick immediately grabbed my collar. You dare play tricks with my Becky, huh? Seeing that, the shocked girl quickly ran away. No, no, I thought it was Paige, so I hired the boy just to give you an excuse to break up with her. Calm down, bro. Patrick reassessed the situation, then he cleared his throat and said, <clears throat> Oh, well, uh, I was bored of Becky anyway, thanks. I was still shocked by this jerky side of Patrick when he immediately said, uh, By the way, you can stop the plan with Paige. I decided I like her now. Lately, she's been so full of life and less clingy. He told me he would still pay me, then he hopped into a taxi. Ugh, that's the version of Paige when she's with me. I gave her that zest of life, you jerk. Whatever. From this day forth, he was no longer my client, and I didn't want his stupid money. <sighs> it was time I told Paige what Patrick was really like. So I arranged to meet her in a cafe and told her everything. But when she got over the initial shock, she snapped at me. I know this is all part of your twisted fabrication. I mean, you lied about speaking Spanish, and now you're just making up stories to break Patrick and me up. Then she threw my textbook back at me and stormed off. Oh man, that Patrick is such a slimeball. But I couldn't blame her for believing him over me. I'd seen firsthand how much of a wolf in sheep's clothing he was. I tried to find proof to show Paige, but that jerk sure covered his tracks. His whole nerdy bookworm facade was flawless. And he was still this sluggish nerd, wobbly clutching the bus handle to go to school every day. Ugh, what a con man. Just you wait, Patrick. It's time the world saw your true face. With such determination, I continued to spy on him around town. Then one time, like every other day, I was on duty when a group stopped me, accompanied by Patrick pointing at me. Here's our sandbag! Uh-oh, looks like I was busted. The whole group gathered around me, fists ready. Yeah, I was pretty terrified. There's no way I could fight off a group this size. I raised my fists and prepared for pain, but then someone shouted, Stop! It was Paige. Suddenly, Patrick immediately changed his attitude and ordered the group to leave. He told Paige that I stole his stuff and his friends were helping him get it back. What? The swine! Connor isn't a thief, I know it for sure. There must be some misunderstanding. Please don't accuse him like that. Patrick's face changed. He grabbed Paige's hand and pulled her away, saying, We're getting engaged at the end of this month. Say no more. Okay, so I may have gate-crashed their engagement party, but I did hide at the back while the speeches were going on. Then to my surprise, as Patrick was talking, they both spotted me. Then Paige turned to him and shook her head. It hurt to see her like this. Perhaps she changed her mind. What do you mean? Is this because of Connor? Paige kept quiet, while Patrick's parents were furious. How dare you cheat on my son? Who do you think you are? Paige, why is this happening? Really, Paige, say something. Feeling the pressure and injustice of it all, poor Paige looked distraught as she desperately tried to hold back her tears. I really couldn't stand seeing her like that, so I jumped out of the crowd to come to her defense. Everyone calm down. Paige is the sweetest, most amazing girl, and she deserves better than this jerk. Don't listen to him. He's a thief and a fiancé stealer. I was done listening to this guy's slander. So I threw a punch straight at his smug face. Yeah, the engagement party had sure turned chaotic. I looked at the wreckage in front of me. The consequences that I had caused. Okay, so maybe coming here wasn't my best idea. Actually, this was all my fault for ever agreeing to help Patrick in the first place. Or I shouldn't have been a jerk in the first place. Feeling deflated, I arrived home and saw that I'd received a message from Paige. 
My heart thudded as I opened it. Thank you for everything and try to practice your Spanish as it's even worse than mine. Goodbye. And that was the last text she sent me. After that, I spent a month trying to contact her but received no reply. So finally, I plucked up my courage to go to Paige's house and was told that she'd left for Spain earlier than scheduled. Perhaps the shock was so huge that Paige wanted to leave this place as soon as possible. It was all my fault. I was the biggest jerk in this story and now I'd lost the girl. Alas, vengeance is bliss. So I walked inside, went straight to Patrick's table where he was wasted in the arms of a bunch of girls, took a picture and sent it to his family. What is done by night appears by day, my friend. A few days later, I heard that after being exposed, Patrick's parents had confiscated all of his bank cards. Even his current girlfriend dumped him. Ha! So that sealed the final breakup deal for my special guest. And now, guess where I'm at? Looking for the girl of my life, duh. And this time, I'm going to make sure I don't screw it up. Hey there, I'm Evie from Georgia. So, I look like a regular teenage girl, right? (laughs) <laughs> Just you wait till you see what I can do. Kids these days are so rude and unruly. I blame the parents. There's just no discipline anymore. See, they don't even respect their principal. But no big deal. I know just how to handle them. There we go. Just a few words and the class immediately went silent. What is this, Mrs. Gardner? That trip was all we've been looking forward to for months. Thanks to everyone's disruptive behavior. Well, to be exact, thanks to the actions of you, 25 out of 300 students, no one has anything to look forward to this year. Okay, then go on, ma'am. Punish us. But why drag the whole year group into this? Other classes will definitely not leave us alone after this. Nobody likes being punished. That's why it works. Now, let's see what your peers make of this, shall we? The whole class was buzzing with, So unfair! Abuse of power! Wicked witch! Oh my, these kids, always full of energy. Go back to your seats and write an apology letter to Miss Helen, along with a promise to never misbehave again, or else... All of them reluctantly sat down. And there we have it. Oh my god. Who are you? I... I... Um... It's just that these unruly students need to learn a lesson for getting Mrs. Helen so exhausted that she ended up in the hospital. And so you just decided to mimic me. Well then, please inform your mum. We will have a talk about this. Here, tomorrow morning. I glumly walked home as slowly as possible. As soon as I walked through the door, Mum was glaring at me. Yep, my mom is Miss Helen, the kindest homeroom teacher ever. However, the kids in her class made her life a misery, which led Mum to get high blood pressure and end up in the hospital. I just wanted to help her, but instead, I just managed to make things worse. <sighs> Hi, Mum. I'm sorry, but I don't regret what I did. Mom started lecturing me about how it was bad enough that Dad had left and her students were rebellious without me acting like a crazy person. Crazy person? She means the times when I copy the people I want to be? But that's my hobby. I inherited that passion from my father, a famous special effect makeup artist. The feeling whenever I successfully transform into someone else is awesome. And it also helps me feel connected to my dad, even though I haven't seen him in a long time. It all started when I was 13, and dad helped me dress up as my fave idol for the school festival. Dad taught me how to analyze the character and practice the disguise. Bold eyeliner, smoky eyes, contouring, plus the bodycon outfits. I looked like a real CL from 2NE1. My friends loved my new look. So over the next few years, I masqueraded into many different people including Lady Gaga, Avril Lavigne, Miley Cyrus, and Sia. The feeling that my makeup talent was that admired and anticipated was just really addictive. Hey, is it Billie Eilish this time? Why not Taylor Swift? I love her so much. I've always done whatever I want, 
and always been exactly who I am. Wow, you got that spot on. Are you a shapeshifter or something? Needless to say, once I imitated someone, I made sure I got their gestures and mannerisms just right. My talent didn't stop at awesome makeup. I was trying to collect things from my locker when a stampede of students raced past me and almost knocked me off my feet. Huh? Who was that strange and rather handsome guy they were chasing? Look at him swaggering. Does he think he's Donald Trump or something? That's Xander. He just transferred here. Keep your voice down, by the way. You don't want to annoy his fan base. Poof. I'm not afraid of those way too girly girls who go crazy for boys. Huh. <laughs> no one scares you, do they, Evie? Now let's go have some granola. Leo may like boring granola, but no thanks. I'm having a hamburger and fried chicken. Billie Eilish is not the type to turn down delicious food for health freak nonsense. Oh, there's that obnoxious Xander again. But this time he's all over Kayla, the snooty hot girl from my class. A boy approached me asking to take a selfie with me, then suddenly I heard a scream. What do you think you're doing? I turned to see what was going on and saw Kayla going ballistic at some poor girl who'd accidentally tripped over and fallen into Xander's lap. What on earth do you think you're doing? Take a look at yourself before trying to attract my man, ugly doofus. How snobby. Did she think her beauty was that splendid to help her keep her man? But not with that empty head, girl. After a few days of research, I showed up at school looking just like Kayla. I'd perfected everything from her blonde hair, makeup, clothes, walk, and voice. Honestly, this time I was quite nervous. Dressing up as someone I actually knew was always extra scary, especially when her friends were walking over. Wow, that dress is so chic. You really are the fashionista of our school, Kay. Come on, Xander's waiting for us on the sports field. Please, do you think I really want you around? I'm just taking advantage of you. And you, you keep following me around like a pet. It's so tragic. Are you crazy? I know you like Xander too. I see the gooey looks you give him. When I'm done with him, I'll consider giving him to you. I walked away leaving the girls freaking out. But I didn't say anything different from what Kayla thought though, right? If only she would be so frank with her friends. Now let's get to the main target. Thinking about him gave me goosebumps. I'm busy, bae. Go hang with your friends for now. He was playing Call of Duty on his phone. I was here to break up with him, but hang on a minute. This guy had skill. I want to have a go. Since when did you know how to play this game? Hmm. He looked kind of touched that I was showing an interest. Okay, I'll wait until after this, and then we will split up. I looked for Leo, but he didn't even recognize me. Poor him. He'd been searching for Billie Eilish since morning. While Leo was complaining, he helped me quickly remove my makeup so I could go back to looking like me before anyone guessed what I'd just done. From that day onwards, Kayla's friends cut her off so she could only cling to Xander. And from my point of view, he seemed to be tired of this clingy girl. Now even her look made him sick, huh? The time has come. I put makeup on his Kayla again and found him. I want this bag. Don't try to trick me with a fake one. Okay, as you wish. I want you to give up COD. That way you can only stay by my side. Okay, I'll follow you all day. I want to throw a party and invite the whole school. Your task is to get everyone to gather around me like they used to. If you can't do that, we'll break up. Deal. But... I see everyone likes you. Right, Evie? Holy mother! Did he recognize me already? But since when? I have to acknowledge your talent. If only you hadn't shown me your charm, you wouldn't have been exposed. Well, Kayla looks like a picture, but a dull one compared to you. You have such a good eye. However, you're no different from her. Miss Helen is your mom, right? Don't be surprised. I'm a better observer than you think, just like you. I know that Kayla was the instigator of the disturbance in the class that sent your mom to the hospital. 
I already apologized to your mom for Kayla's behavior. And if you want to know why I did that, it's because... I have a big crush on you. Oh my god. I didn't expect things to turn out this way. But, okay. Taking it as a slap in the face for Kayla on behalf of my mom, I still agreed to date him. The next day, I showed up again at school as Ariana Grande, simply because I wanted to. But this time, I also played another role. Xander's girlfriend. As usual, every time I dressed up as a new character, all eyes were on me. But this time, it was more epic when I walked side by side with the hottest guy in school. When Leo saw that I was with Xander, he rolled his eyes at me, then walked off. Then Kayla walked around the corner, saw us together, and started shouting at me. How dare you steal my man? You're just some pathetic wannabe! Xander took my arm and yelled at her. Evie's creative, sweet, and really funny. I want to be with her. I like her. Kayla's face dropped. Then she pointed her finger in front of him. How could you do this to me? I will get you back for this. Then she huffed off. Xander looked at me and asked if I was okay. Then he invited everyone to a party at his house that night to celebrate the fact that I was now his girlfriend. Was he serious? But whatever. It would be rude to say no, right? So that evening, I went to his party. To my surprise, Kayla was already there. So I flirted with Xander to annoy her further. Then suddenly... Xander leaned in close to my face, which made my whole body feel hot. What was happening? He... he was going to kiss me? But then he whispered in my ear, You haven't told me how you feel about me yet. <laughs> you were looking forward to this answer, weren't you? I... But before I could reply, Leo appeared out of nowhere, grabbed my hand, and dragged me out of there! Ugh! What on earth are you doing? I'm the one who should be asking you that question. What on earth were you going to say? That I have feelings for you too? This whole thing is a setup between Xander and Kayla to humiliate you. Lucky for you, I arrived just in time to overhear Kayla talking to her friends about this dirty plan. Are you done talking? Do you really think I'd fall into their trap that easily? I already know their dirty tricks, and I was about to tell everyone what jerks they are. But then you showed up and ruined my plan. I don't care how clever and perfect your plan is. How long are you going to continue this tiring game of dispute? They think just because they're both hot that they can treat everyone else like they're puppets. Well, I've had enough. Evie, you're better than this. I don't like this revenge-seeking version of you. Can you please just stop it and go back to normal? Leo walked away in a huff and left me out here alone in the street. I stormed home and took off my makeup. Why was Leo so mad at me? I did nothing wrong. The gentle Leo I knew never had gotten mad or even went against my will, and was always the most enthusiastic supporter every time I imitated someone. What had gotten into him? I called him continuously, but Leo turned off the phone. Ugh. I felt so alone, it was horrible. Then I heard a knock on my door. Mom peered her head around it. Seeing me upset, she came over and cuddled me. It felt good having her comfort me, so I ended up blurting out everything to her. Hmm. It sounds like Leo was just worried about you. But as for Xander and Kayla, they're not worth your time or effort. Don't become someone you're not just to get revenge on people who don't deserve you. But... Suddenly, I heard rustling outside of my bedroom window. Then Leo poked his head through it. If you're not tired, then keep copying. You keep following me around like a pet. Go live your own real life. Mom and I both laughed along with him. Then I hugged Leo and told him I was sorry. It's true that pretending to be someone else is exhausting. And I must admit, I was wrong to use Kayla's name to sabotage her relationships. Tomorrow, I'll find her and apologize even though I don't want to, but I have to find a way to end this peacefully. Then, I can focus on just being me for a while, without any of the drama. Wow, this cake tastes like heaven. 
I reached out to grab another piece when I heard a growl behind me. I told you to be graceful, didn't I? Then, Mom pulled me over to greet this smartly dressed couple. Ugh, again. They looked me up and down, then said, I heard that you're a gifted pianist. We would love to hear you play. Huh? Piano? I'd never played it before in my life. Before I could say a word, Mom chimed in. Unfortunately, Phoebe's just sprained her wrist. Maybe next time. I looked at her confused. Why would she lie like that? Jeez. Mom, why did you say that I could play the piano? Ah, yes. I may have bragged to them that all of my adopted children are excellent. What can I say? All moms boasted about their kids, right? And yep, I'd grown up in an orphanage before mom welcomed me into her family. This place is pretty grand, huh? I found it overwhelming at first and ended up getting lost trying to find my room. Luckily, there are plenty of my adoptive sisters around to show me where to go. I do have ten of them. Yep, you heard me right. Ten. It was as if I had just moved from one orphanage to another, only no more orphaned. And we're all similar ages, which is unusual, as foster parents often prefer younger kids. They said us teenagers are rather stubborn. Not to mention how my adoptive dad is never around. Seriously, I couldn't even tell you what he looks like. So it's just us girls here. I got on best with Collins. She's a couple of years older than me, and we share the same bedroom. As much as I liked living with mom and my sisters, mom did make us all do strange things, such as wear cheesy clothes and walk in a straight line. Worse still, she forced me to learn the piano. Ugh, I was not at all musical. I just made a right din. She also taught me how to eat properly, but it did kind of feel like a dog training session. I was only allowed to eat when she showed a signal, and by the time I could catch up with how to use the silverwares, the meal was already finished. Ugh. But I suppose that's how every mom teaches her daughter, right? And apparently, mom didn't have the patience to coach me anymore, so she handed me over to Collins, her star daughter. We spent an hour every day talking together, or rather, she gave me pointers on how to talk correctly. Collins said I needed to control my volume because I had a tendency to shout my words and it wasn't very ladylike. I had to whisper at the same volume as her and also choose my words carefully to show intelligence and grace. Ugh, maybe it'd be easier if I just didn't say anything at all from now on. Aside from Collins, I didn't have a chance to get to know my other sisters as mom made each of us pursue a different aptitude. Then we had to perform for her on our monthly assessment. Mom's overall very gentle and caring but too strict when it comes to training. So we all have to spend a lot of time and effort in practice. One day I was trying to make sense of the music sheet when I heard Lexi complain, Ugh, why does mom force me on this mission impossible? So boring. What? At least ice skating is 1,000 times more fun than the piano. If only. An idea popped into my head. That night, I went to my mom and timidly said, Mom? I want to switch from piano lessons to ice skating. I can exchange with Lexi. I... What? No. But why? Lexi doesn't even like ice skating. Um, well, it's because I can see potential in each one of you, so it's impossible to switch. Frustrated, I went back to my room and began whining to Collins. But she thought that it wasn't a big deal. Mom knows what's best for us. Well, that I'm not too sure about. Because, yet we didn't even get to go to school. As mom said, her homeschooling was enough. While I only found her method rather strange. I've dreamed of this perfect life with an amazing mom. But mom was never very affectionate. It didn't matter how much we studied or tried to perfect our chosen hobby. She never cuddled or praised us. Not even Collins, who's the smartest girl here. I was desperate to impress mom. So one time I spent ages making this Portuguese appetizer for her but all she did was take one bite and say it was okay. I asked her if she didn't like me, but she just replied in a growl tone that she was helping us to have a high position in society and a bright life. But I don't need those things. I just wanted her to like me. This place is so stuffy, and the only time that I can actually breathe is when I'm on my Friday morning bread buying errand. Ugh. Then suddenly someone patted me on my shoulder, which startled me so much I dropped my stuff. Hey, it's... Really you. But is something wrong with you? Why the strange walk? The only thing I'm good at is buying bread, but now you've ruined it. See? 
Jet stooped down to pick it up for me. He was still as rude as ever, but I still found myself jealous of this free spirit off him. We used to be a perfect match at our orphanage, and quite embarrassing to admit, but I was very naughty back then, and often shoplifted with him. You could go steal some more. Remember our tricks? I have to tell you three things. Firstly, I've been adopted. Secondly, my adoptive family is wealthy. And finally, I'm being educated to be a noble lady, so no more stealing. That's ridiculous. I also have three things for you. I've been adopted too. My parents love me so much. Oh, and they're cops. We looked at each other and burst out laughing. So we were both caught, weren't we? Jet and I sat down on a nearby bench to catch up. And when I poured my heart out about my new family, he interrupted me. Sounds strange to me. Why would they only adopt teenage girls? And what are those training lessons and monthly evaluations for? Then, Jet insisted that he would investigate my adoptive family. That's silly. <laughs> but anyway, it's fun to reunite with a friend, and we agreed to hang out every Friday after that. And here comes my first assessment. Of course, I couldn't even play a simple melody, so I had to study for three more hours every day. My sisters suffered even more. Kinsley was forced to abstain from food because she weighed two kilograms more than the standard. In contrast, Willow had to eat continuously at night in order to gain five kilograms. If it's to this extent, then it must have not been simply for the sake of the casual boasting of a mom, right? On the next Bread Friday, I told Jet about last week's assessment. He firmly stated that there was a problem with my family. I don't think so, Jet. Mom just wants the best for us. Listen, Phoebe, I think she trained you guys on purpose. Each of you has to be good at a certain subject, just like the shopping orders. Orders? Don't go too far. You know Kobe beef? Cows are made to listen to music, given beer to drink, and massaged, but in the end, you know what the outcome is. Oh no. Is that what this is? Mom always said that she would give us the best life, as long as we worked hard. Were we being tested and stamped like those cows? One day, I came home to Collins, excitedly packing her suitcase. Mom said she's taking me to a new school tomorrow. So Collins was leaving? But where? I'll miss you, sis. Text me when you get there. But days passed without a word from her. I asked mom, and she said that Colin's hard work paid off, and she'd been accepted into a prestigious school, but they had a strict no-phones rule. Huh. That sounded sus. So I told Jet, and he insisted I report the case. Another Friday. Jet and I met at a church near the bakery. Huh. Why did he choose this boring place? I was looking around when I saw a group of schoolgirls coming out of the church. They all wore the same dull uniform, had their hair neatly tied back in a bun, and all obediently lined up. Then there I saw her. Collins? I was about to rush over to greet her, but the glare of the woman accompanying her scared me off. This was not right. I'd got to ask Collins what was going on. So I grabbed Jet's arm and went after the group. But they got into a black car and sped away. Maybe they chose this church as a place for their transactions. Smart, huh? They put everyone in school uniforms so no one would suspect them. But seeing those faces, I'm sure they're about to be sent to the black market soon. Black market? The thought alone made me shudder. I had to save Collins. I couldn't let mom get away with this. That night, I tiptoed downstairs to eavesdrop. Okay, I'll deliver her this weekend. Correct. She's 5'7". She can ice skate. Cooking and painting? Of course. I have her trained as required. You won't be disappointed. So the deal goes as planned, okay? See you on Sunday. That's it. The next delivery was Lexi. I checked her room and saw her packing her stuff, a beam of innocent happiness on her face. I quickly texted Jet, and he immediately replied, Just wait at home calmly. Don't act without thinking. I'll figure something out. That night, I couldn't sleep a wink. I was so terrified something terrible would happen to Lexi. So early the next morning, as soon as I saw Mom and Lexi getting in the car to leave, I snuck into the trunk lay there without making any sound, and sent Jet the location. The car took a long time to stop. Had we finally arrived at the transaction location? When it seemed safe, I carefully climbed out and saw Mom talking to a fastidious-looking middle-aged woman. What did Mom say that made Lexi so panicked that she kept clutching Mom's hand? The woman handed Mom a rather thick envelope, then grabbed Lexi's hand and dragged her away. God, where was Jet? I couldn't just sit still like this and watch my sister being taken away. Let Lexi go! Now! Phoebe, what are you doing? Stop it! You're going to sell us, aren't you? 
I already know the truth. What on earth are you talking about, Phoebe? Furious, Mom pulled me away. Stop. Suddenly, two cops rushed in, ordering everyone to put their hands up. Behind them was Jet, still panting. Turns out they were Jet's adoptive parents. Help me! Mom is trying to sell me and my sister. Seeing that, the other woman quickly explained, No, there must be a misunderstanding here. I'm just helping Gianna's daughter to enroll at my school. Bewildered, my eyes darted from Mom to the other woman and then to Jet. In the principal's office, I told everyone why I thought my mom was a human trafficker. They all gasped in surprise. I made you practice that hard just because I want you to get in here, the most prestigious all-girls school, so that you can have a better life. I don't want to go to this school anymore, Mom. She told me all about the harsh rules. This place is terrifying. You can't force your kids to do that. You adopted them, so you have to make them feel safe and loved. Miss Gianna, this is a prestigious school, and it doesn't need your scandal. You led me to believe that your daughters were naturally gifted, which now transpires is all lies. I won't accept any child from your family from now on. No, they're my children. They deserve the best. Then she begged the principal to withdraw her decision, but she firmly shook her head. Suddenly, Mom shouted, Why? I just want them not to suffer like me. So what's wrong with that? Then, Mom burst into tears. It turns out that in the past, Mom was in love with a politician. But he decided it would further his career if he chose to marry a graduate from this prestigious school instead. Mom loved him so much, she continued to be his mistress. But despite being fully provided for by him, Mom always felt that she was inferior to his official wife, especially when he proudly boasted about his smart wife and talented daughters. Then, when she wanted to start her own family, he wouldn't allow it. In the end, she decided to adopt girls and train them to become excellent so that they could enter this school regardless of their background. So that's the reason why she did this to us. I have to admit, I did feel a bit sorry for her. All of this was probably just to ease the pain of her past. But mom, we don't want to go to this snooty school. We just want you to love us and protect us. I'm sorry. I was wrong. I was only trying to help. I'm sorry. It's all my fault. And she hugged me. So, in the end, my sisters and I finally have a truly happy family. Mom doesn't make us do any dumb tasks anymore. Instead, she lets us pursue our own dreams and passions. Now we all go to a public school and live out our normal teen lives. It's wonderful finally having an amazing mom, incredible sisters, and my pretty awesome best friend, Jet, all by my side. I was sitting at my usual spot in the common room during break time. Coding, of course. Eyes glued to my MacBook Pro when suddenly, Evelyn, my best friend, barged in and ran straight over to a group of girls. Here she goes again. Guys, guys, I've got big news. You all know Helen Wright, the cheerleader? Kay, she has a huge crush on Dean, so she went to the locker and it said yes. Now guess what? I just saw them in the hallway, kissing! Ha! These gossip vultures will believe anything. Confused? Let me wrap it up for you. They were talking about this mysterious locker, situated in the school's back alley. The creepy part was, it could actually speak and foretell your future love partner. For it to work, you had to visit the locker between 6 and 7 p.m. Tap on it exactly three times and say the spell. Roses are red. Violets are blue, in a world of love, just we two. Then, ask it if you and your crush are compatible. If the locker said yes, then congratulations. But if no, then too bad. This proves it. The locker must have some sort of prophecy power. Of course, duh, you know why? Because it's possessed by a lovelorn spirit. (laughs) Oh boy, if only these naive kids knew the truth. The mystical locker that they so worshipped was actually a product of advanced IT, of which the mastermind was, moi. Didn't see that coming, did you? I'm Karina, by the way, but people like to call me Robot Girl because I'm a super proud tech genius. But kids my age didn't appreciate my talents as they only seemed to care about love. Especially Alicia over there. She despised IT and presumed that anyone into it was a stone-cold machine who'd never ever had a relationship. 
So, being the tech was that I am, I had to come up with a brilliant plan to prove her wrong. I spent every bit of spare time I had coding. I hacked into the school system to collect students' infos, such as their star signs, blood type, hobbies, and career orientation. Then, I used this as a database to create a love compatibility calculator. And just like that, my first brainchild was born. Easy peasy. Using it was simple. All I had to do was insert the two names and it'd show me a yes or a no. Knowing how much my peers buy into the whole spiritual stuff, I devised my locker plan. I found this rusty locker at the dead-end alley behind our school, super glued a walkie-talkie inside, locked it well. Then, with the other walkie-talkie in hand, I stayed in the school equipment room, which is convenient enough to be on the other side of the wall. To top it up a notch, I even used a voice changer app to get a perfect ghostly haunted tone. Then, I anonymously spread rumors about the locker's magical powers onto the school's blog. My trick quickly took off, and since launch day, 15 couples have been successfully matched. Can you imagine? True love? Oh, please. It all came down to some simple algorithms. That's all. But, one more thing. I hadn't exactly told Evelyn about this. Yeah, I love her, but she's not the best at keeping secrets. To be exact, she's a walking speaker who couldn't help but blab any gossip she'd heard to the entire school. Anyway, I needed to test if the locker actually worked first. Then I'd tell her, maybe when I reach 20 successful couples. Luckily for me, keeping this one secret from her turned out to be easy, as her attention was all on her crush, Jace, the school's hot boy. In her eyes, Jace was like an angel or something. It seems like I'm the only one who didn't get the gooey eyes memo. One evening, I was taking my locker shift when I heard a familiar voice. Evelyn's! Oh boy, I could already guess she wanted to ask about her and Jace. The algorithm said yes, and I could hear Evelyn screaming ecstatically at the announcement. <sighs> Fine, if she's happy, I'm happy. But it didn't last long, as an hour later, just as I was about to leave, more footsteps came towards the locker, and I heard a knock on it. Roses are red, violets are blue. Hold on. Jace? What was he doing out here? Can I become a couple with... Karina? What? No way! Had something hit his head? I immediately said no. No calculator needed for that. He stayed silent at first, but then asked again if I'd be his girlfriend. The answer was still no. He asked the locker again and again, but no, no, no. Jeez, what's with this guy? The next day at school, I noticed Evelyn's wearing her lucky lilac dress. Oh no, was she going to confess to Jace? I had to stop this. Hey, I have an emergency thingy. You need to come with me. Karina, what are you doing? But it was too late as Jace was approaching us. Hey, what are you playing? Tug of war? <laughs> oh, I think you messed up your hair. Here, let me. Jeez, he wasn't necessarily close. And the worst part was that Evelyn just witnessed the whole thing. Right at that moment, the bell rang and she left for class. Jace, this idiot! The locker said no already, and there he went, messing it all up. Now, I had to wait till the end of class to explain things to Evelyn. But things weren't that easy, as every time I tried to approach her, she gave me this flustered look, then hurried away. One time, I managed to reach her, but then, yep. You guessed it, Shameless Jace showed up and ruined the conversation. Gosh, this leech wouldn't quit bothering me. In math class, he asked the teacher to let him change from Evelyn's group to mine, cause he suddenly wanted me to tutor him. The worst part was, the more I tried to ignore him, the more interested in me he seemed to get. Until one day, as I was running away from him, I bumped into someone. It was the school's head boy. Killian, oh man, I was sure I was in trouble, but... Can you see her bothering her? Quit it already. 
Did Killian just defend me? But, uh-oh, that sure made Jace mad. It's none of your business. Excuse me, this is a library, not a theater club. Keep quiet or out. Phew, thank God I got out of there. But, come to think of it, that was a strange thing for the normally stern-faced Killian to do. Hmm, whatever. I don't have time to think about this right now. So far, the locker had predicted 19 couples successfully. I just needed one more match, then I could proudly make my invention public. And voila! My app would change the whole world's dating scene. Here it is, my 20th client. Wait, isn't that... Killian? And guess who he's asking about? Yeah, me! Maybe everyone was right about the robot girl nickname. Cause how could I be so clueless all this time about Jace and now Killian? I inserted the data and the result was a no. But hang on, what if I did it, Killian? Would that make Jace give up and stop bothering me? And Evelyn wouldn't keep her distance from me anymore. It settled. The locker pronounced yes. Monday morning. I was in the study hall, working on the math group project with Chase, when a note was passed to me. Hey, I know this is a bit sudden, but would you like to go out with me, Saturday 3pm? Killian. I took a peek at him, and saw him smiling for the first time ever. Okay, I was about to write my answer when Jay snatched the note, read it, then stared straight at Killian. You, me, outside. What was he gonna do now? I sneakily followed them to the hallway, but Evelyn appeared right behind me and signaled me to shush. That was when I heard Jace asking what was going on between me and Killian. Nothing really. Only the infamous love locker foretold Karina and I would be together. Jace was too stunned to speak as he turned purple with rage. So there's nothing going on between you and Jace? Of course not! I've been trying to tell you that this whole time! You've heard everything? Sorry, I didn't mean to. So, what do you think about the date? Um, sure, I'd love to. I could see Jace's boiled over from behind, but what could he do other than bear his grudge and storm off? <laughs> Problem solved! Saturday arrived and Killian picked me up for our date. He even asked for my parents' approval, then opened the car door for me like a true gentleman. To be honest, I was kinda nervous, but he was so good at comforting me. He then took me to the super cool ice cream drive through And coincidentally, we picked the same flavor. Butter pecan. <laughs> Before I noticed, I'd felt so comfortable around him already. And you know what the best part was? Our last stop was a planetarium. We sat side by side beneath the glistening star-filled sky. Whoa. This date was much more than I expected. I got to see this whole new side of him, one that is so warm and caring. Being with him made me feel good. Maybe the algorithms weren't quite accurate, right? It did say Killian and I would never be a couple, but what I was feeling then proved otherwise. I was still lost in thoughts when my alarm suddenly went off. 5.15 already? Right, I gotta get to the locker and change the walkie-talkie's battery. So I quickly said goodbye to Killian, then ran to the alley. As I was opening the locker to get the walkie-talkie out, Karina? Are you opening the locker? How? Unless you're... Oh... I don't know how, but you sure tricked the entire school. I froze on the spot, not knowing what to do. There's no need to freak out. I'm not gonna tell a soul. That is, as long as you become a girlfriend. Why are you so obsessed with me? You can have anyone else you want. Why me? Cause you're different, babe. You're interesting and somehow aren't easily swayed by me. Which makes you a challenge. Ugh. This douchebag made me want to vomit. He could expose me all he wants, but I'd never ever go near him again. I shoved past him to leave, but suddenly he grabbed my hand and tried to force me into his embrace. Get off of me, you psycho! 
I never meant for it to turn out like this. I just wanted to prove that data was the driving force of compatibility. But maybe I'd been wrong after all. <sighs> I decided it was time to confess all to Evelyn before Jace told her first. Only the next morning, when I arrived to pick her up as usual, her mom told me she'd already left. Hmm, was there something I didn't know about? I turned on my phone notifications, and that's when I saw it. Alicia had posted the picture of Jace grabbing me, but the angle made it look like, in Alicia's words, we were kissing. Huh? So that's why Evelyn didn't want to see me. And what would Killian think of this? I arrived at school just as Killian stepped out of his car. I rushed toward him, and when our eyes met, I could see he was hurt. Then he just turned and walked away. Without thinking, I caught up with him and I poured my heart out telling him I was the one behind the locker, how I got involved with Chase because of Evelyn, and how I lied to him when he went to the locker. But that was also how I realized I had feelings for someone. For you. Excuse me? You're the one behind the love locker? No way. Gosh, I'm so glad I got all my secrets out. In that case, we have a big problem. Evelyn then walked me along the corridor, and what I saw was pure chaos. People were crying, arguing, and even fighting, all because of the locker. One couple was having a tearful breakup, cause the locker claimed they weren't meant to be. In the other corner, two girls were fighting, cause the locker matched them to the same guy. A boy was breaking stuff out of anger, since the locker didn't match him with his crush. The entire lobby echoed the words, Love Locker. Gosh, how'd I been so oblivious to this before? I'd been so caught up with my own problems, I'd neglected the consequences of the locker I'd created. This was wrong, so wrong. I had to shut the locker down right now. I rummaged through my bag to find my MacBook, but... This was my baby, my first brainchild. I... No, I must do this. <sighs> yeah, that was the right thing to do. Technology shouldn't be used to predict one's feelings. I've learned the hard way not to mess with anyone's relationship ever again. And that love is never ever simple. You don't need a mysterious object of the spiritual world to tell you who to date. You just gotta experience it. Well, it's been three months since I shut down the infamous love locker. Now, everything is finally back to normal. And guess what? I've got a boyfriend. Yep, Killian and I just went official last week. Evelyn doesn't like Jace anymore. She vowed not to run after some good-looking pretentious jerk ever again. Instead, she's just gonna wait for the right guy to come along. About the love locker, when people realized it didn't work anymore, the speculations became rife. My personal favorite is that the spirit had found peace and left. But still, every now and then, I hear someone gossip about the haunted love locker that once turned the whole school upside down, and I can help but feel all goose pimply. Oof. This view of the Alps is magnificent. Wow, I've never felt this free before. <sighs> huh? Hang on, are those meowing sounds that I'm hearing? I followed the sounds to the raging river nearby. And there, stuck on a rock in the middle of it, was a terrified cat. Oh no, poor baby, I've got to help it. I quickly grabbed onto the nearby tree, then leaned out towards the rock with an opened umbrella on the other hand for the cat to jump onto. The cat hesitated for a bit, before making the leap. But it's heavier than I expected. I lost my balance and tumbled into the river. I grabbed the cat just in time, but the strong current made it impossible to float. In a panic, I screamed for help, but the waves lapped over me, and gulps of water filled my mouth. And just like that, I felt my surroundings darken. Ugh, what was this wet, scratchy thing rubbing on my face? I opened my eyes to see that cat sitting on me. Thank goodness it was okay, but where am I? This seemed like some kind of rustic cottage house? Suddenly, a man walked into the room with a food tray. H who are you? Relax, I'm the one who jumped into the river to rescue you both. Turns out, he happened to pass by the river while we were swallowed by the current, and he didn't hesitate to jump in to save us, then brought us back to his home. Oh, um, thank you. For everything. 
Sure. Here, eat up. So, how come you and Topaz fell into the waterway? Who? Oh, you mean the cat? How come you know his name? It says it right here. See? I'm guessing this is not your cat, then? I told him how I accidentally found Topaz, so its family must live around here somewhere. Hearing this, he agreed to help me find Topaz's owner the next day. He even gave me his bed for the night, then walked out saying he'd sleep on the couch. But as a guest, I couldn't let him do that, so I just grabbed the blanket and went to sit next to him. You have a cool tattoo there. Kinda looks like a mini Mars, right? Nah, it's my birthmark. The only thing my parents left me. Hans then told me that he grew up not having a clue who his parents were or why they abandoned him. At 18, he moved out of his foster home and came here to become an herbalist. <sighs> I felt so bad for him, and in a way, I could relate. Being alone is difficult, but having both mom and dad won't guarantee your happiness. I was born into a well-off family with both of my parents, but the thing was, they only got together due to an arranged marriage, and they have resented each other ever since. My house always felt so cold and empty, and I hated staying there. So, as soon as I graduated high school, I took a gap year to travel the world. Actually, Switzerland is my first stop. Gotta say, it's nice to have someone to talk to like this. I guess Hans felt the same way by this look he gave me. He seemed very touched. The next morning, we took Topaz to the town to ask around. Turned out, today was their annual festival, so a horde of people crammed along the street to celebrate and watch the parade. Hans held my hand so I didn't get lost, but somehow the crowd still pulled me away and I ended up stuck among these sweaty people. Suddenly, a hand grabbed mine and led me out of there. Phew, thank God, I couldn't breathe in there. And you know what? A super handsome, stylish guy was standing in front of me. Are you okay? That's when I noticed the tail of my shirt was ripped. Freaked out, I tried to cover it up, so he took out a silk scarf and tied it around my waist. For a second there, I froze to the spot, so amazed by his thoughtfulness. Just at that moment, my phone buzzed with a call from Hans. He told me to meet him at the fountain. Um, slight problem? I had no idea where that was. Well, lucky me, this gallant guy offered to take me there. We talked along the way, and I found out his name's Willard. He lives in a nearby town and was here for the festival. I told him I came to find the owner of the lost cat I'd found. Then, when I showed him the picture of Topaz, he couldn't hide his shock. Are you sure this is the cat you found? I nodded. He stayed silent for a while, then said, I might know its owner, but I gotta go now. Bring the cat to meet me there. Faye, it was nice meeting you. Then he bowed down to kiss the back of my hand before he left. How sweet. I watched as he disappeared into the crowd. Thanks to Topaz, I got the chance to meet him again. Uh, why are you making that funny face? I told him about my encounter with Willard and convinced him to come with me to the address on the handkerchief. He seemed skeptical at first, but then gave in. I mean, other than this, we had no clue. It was worth a shot, right? The next day, we went to the place Willard told us. But, seriously? Is this right? Why were there a line of people all holding near-on identical cats to Topaz? They even had the same collar as him. What is going on? I walked over to ask an old man sitting on a bench. He told me the millionaire lady who lives here had lost her dearest cat, Topaz. People said his name was on the top of her inheritance list, and she promised to greatly reward anyone who safely returned him, so these frauds were trying to deceive the owner by bringing some Topaz lookalike here. But Madame Primrose is no fool. Huh? Madame Primrose? The iconic designer and president of Wisteria Fashion Corp? That's right. Oh my god! I immediately dragged Hans to stand in the line. You see, my childhood dream was to become a fashion designer, and, of course, the one I admired the most was none other than Madame Primrose! Ah! One of the reasons I came to Switzerland was to find her and hopefully become her apprentice. And now look, what are the odds? Finally, it was our turn, but... I'm gonna have to stop you right there. All right, everyone, listen up. Madame Primrose won't accept any toe passes from now on, as she's tired of your deceit. So, disperse. What? We didn't just wait half a day here for nothing. Fine, I'll find another way to get in. We then walked around the mansion and found its side gate. Then, just when we were climbing over it, 
A maid caught us, but she didn't make a fuss out of it. Instead, she seemed a bit flirty towards Hans. Ooh, I had an idea. There's our chance. You go and charm her. He seemed confused at first, but then got the point. Hey, I think you're really cute. Hans then tried his best at flirting, and as soon as she swooned, I asked her to help us return Topaz to his owner. The maid hesitated at first, but when we said that we didn't need to be repaid or anything, she agreed to let us in. We quickly split up to find Madame Primrose. I wandered the maze-like hallways. Then I suddenly bumped into someone. Mind your way! Wait, I don't know you. What are you doing here? I, uh, um... She's my new friend. Is there a problem? I'm sorry, young master. It was Willard. He came to rescue me again. Great to see you again, young master Willard. You live here? Why didn't you call me when you arrived? Did you bring the cat? Where is it? Give it to me right now. Willard, calm down. Topaz is safe. I just found out his owner is Madame Primrose and- I'm her grandson. Just give the cat to me now. His agitated behavior didn't seem right. I took a few steps back from him, refused to do what he said, then ran. You don't understand. Just at that moment, Hans and Madame Primrose appeared. There you are. Are you okay? He worriedly asked. But boy, all I could see right now was Madame Primrose. She approached me, held my hand, and repeatedly thanked me for risking my life to rescue Topaz. This was amazing, but... Hmm, but why did Willard just leave without saying anything? Madame Primrose invited us to stay for dinner that evening. Joining us were Willard and his mom, Agnetta. Madame then told me how much Topaz meant to her. Twenty years ago, she lost her son, Mr. Alvarez, to a car accident. Then a year later, her grandson Leroy disappeared. Her grief was almost unbearable, but then she was gifted a cat, Topaz, and thanks to him, she began to heal. I tried comforting her by saying she still had Willard, her other amazing grandson with an excellent fashion sense inherited from his grandma. But to my surprise, Madame Primrose said Willard isn't her real grandson since Agnetta is actually Mr. Alvarez's second wife and was a stepmom to the missing grandson, Leroy, and Willard was her son with her ex-husband. I could see Willard and his mom were feeling so uncomfortable. Willard must have felt so hurt as Madame Primrose never even thought of him as a family member. Then my train of thought was interrupted by Hans. Ugh, why didn't he just tell me to pass him the salt instead of sticking his right arm to my face like this? Suddenly, Agnetta gave him a mortified look and spilled wine all over the table. Mom, are you okay? She didn't reply, but just left. I could tell it was because she saw Hans's birthmark. What could this be? Has she no manners? She must be unwell. I'll go check on her. So I followed her to the garden gazebo. That's where I heard her talking to someone on the phone. You had one simple job. Take that pampered moggy miles away. Well, guess what? It came back. I gasped in shock, and right then, a hand covered my mouth. Shh. Be quiet. Oh, but it gets worse. The stupid cat brought Leroy, the missing grandson, home. That's right. I saw that Mars birthmark with my own eyes. If Primrose finds out about this, we're done. You hear me? Wait, so Leroy, Madame Primrose's only grandchild, is actually Hans. Uh, and his stepmom was the one who secretly gave him away in the first place. Even worse, I was hearing the shocking news with her son. Willard, get it together. Do you know anything about her plan? I knew Mom was behind Topaz going missing. That's why I tried to take the cat away earlier, to keep him safe from her. But, but Leroy too? That was just heartless. What should I do now? She's my mom, after all. I could see his pure and kind soul being tormented, and my heart ached for him. I know it must be hard, but you need to tell Madame Primrose the truth and make things right. That's a way to help your mom redeem herself, okay? He stared at me with those dreamy eyes of his, and I felt my heart turn to mush. But a phone call from Hans interrupted us. He was looking for me, saying we gotta go. Right, I had to tell him the truth. In a cab back to Hans's cottage, I told him everything, and he just burst out laughing, saying, <laughs> I'm Leroy, the heir of a millionaire. Oh, please. <laughs> I'm serious. You were brought to the foster home exactly 19 years ago, and you both have this one-of-a-kind birthmark. Okay, so what if I'm really her grandson? 
I don't even know her, and I'm definitely not rich kid material. You've been lonely your entire life. This is your chance to find the family you've always wanted. Hans was speechless. It seemed I'd hit his weak spot, and he finally agreed. We asked the driver to take us back to the mansion. But no one was awake at that hour except a gardener. He led us to a library deep into the mansion, brought out tea, and told us to wait. Just a few minutes later, Hans started coughing, and his face swelled up. Oh no, he must have been allergic to something in the tea. Panicked, I screamed for help, and the gardener came back and carried Hans to the car. But then, a hand muzzled me from behind, and everything went dark. I woke up with my head pounding and unable to move. As I tried to make sense of the situation, I realized I was tied to a chair, mouth taped, surrounded by some rusty, unsanitary medical tools. And, on the other side of the room, Hans was unconscious and tied to a patient's bed. Standing next to him was Agneta and the gardener and a guy in a blouse with some kinds of tools in his hand, about to do something to Hans's birthmark. I tried to scream and struggled to break free, but I couldn't move an inch. Right at that moment, Willard barged in. Stop this. Leave right now or I'll call the cops for your unlicensed business. And mom, I already know everything, so please have some remorse. Agneta looked so ashamed of herself. Willard, everything I did, I did it for you. Please understand. You saw how that old hag Primrose treated me. I was so miserable. Then your dad offered to help me. Dad? You mean Tim? How can he be my dad? Don't be such a wimp, son. I stayed and worked here like a servant just to be close to you. We did all this so you can be the only heir. You deserve that. Now finish it. I... I can't, Tim. Get away from my mom, you dirtbag. You never cared about me. You only moved here to manipulate her to do your dirty work. A terrible person like you will never be my dad. Then I'll do it. As he was about to lay hands on Hans, suddenly there was a meowing sound and Topaz appeared, followed by Madame Primrose. Step away from my grandson. You dared to live under my roof all this time and play foul tricks on my family? Take him away. Luckily, Hans came round, and he had a tearful reunion with his grandma. They finally had the closure they deserved. Hans decided to stay in the mansion with his long-lost family. He's even planted an herbal garden there for treating and healing people, as he always wished. Madame Primrose had finally found peace, as now she had both her beloved grandson and precious cat back. She also thought that maybe she'd been too strict on Agneta, so she decided not to press any charges against her. Agneta had also apologized, but she felt too full of shame to stay and decided to move out of the mansion. Willard followed his mom and helped her start a new life. What about me? Well, I got the thing I've always dreamt of, to be Madame Primrose's apprentice. That's her gift to me for bringing both her cat and her grandson back. And, right now, I'm late for a date with a very special guy. Can you guess who it is? Hi, I'm Kate. And I'm doing something totally thrilling. I'm running away. Just picturing my parents' worried faces makes me smile. Why, you ask? They deserve it for trying to send me, their beloved only daughter, to some disgusting girls' boarding school. Yuck! No parties, the grossest uniform, bossy supervisors, and no hot-muscled guys. Ugh! That place is for nerds. Not me, an it girl and the founder of Clique Chic, our school's exclusive group for the hottest, most sought-after girls. To be a part of the club, you must be really fashionable, you know? I'm talking about a wardrobe full of the latest designer must-haves, manicured nails, and the glossiest hair. Only girls as dazzling as us can make the school hallway our catwalk stage. As one of us, your life will be filled with endless parties and super cute jocks fighting for your attention. Studying and homework? <laughs> That's not our thing. Those loser nerds who are chasing after us will take care of it. Hey, do you know those people? I looked outside and saw a group of bodyguards who were yelling and trying to force my cab to stop. Ugh, this was so uncalled for. 500 bucks if you can get rid of them. The driver immediately sped up. <laughs> Ordinary people will do anything for a little bit of money. He dropped me off at a service station and I quickly snuck inside and hid in the restrooms. Ew! 
This place was gross. Gosh, those bodyguards were loitering about outside so no one could leave or enter without them seeing. How tragic. This was so stupid. All my parents needed to do was let me stay at home for the summer. But no, they sent those bodyguards after me to ruin my life. Suddenly, a cubicle door flung open and knocked into me. Ouch! Are you blind? What are those glasses even for? I... I'm sorry. The girl quickly apologized, then she bent down to pick her fallen stuff up. But when she looked up, I gasped in shock. Holy guacamole! What in the world? She looked exactly like me. I mean, at least her face did. Her style was disgusting and old-fashioned. Ew. But given my dire situation, I came up with an amazing idea. Okay, so this is weird. Do you want to make some money? And I mean a lot of money? She gave me this dumbfounded look. Ew. I hope I didn't get frown lines like she did when I screwed up my face. They were ghastly. I have a really lucrative job for you. As you can see, we have similar faces. Freaky, but fortunate. So I need you to pretend to be me and live my rich life for a month or two. Here's my Twitter account. Just skim through it. You can learn everything about me there. It should be enough for you to play the part and avoid my family's suspicion. And here's your payment. I rifled through my bag and handed her the rest of the cash. Jeez, this must be a huge amount for her, as her eyes lit up like she was seeing money for the first time, and she immediately took it. We quickly exchanged clothes, and as instructed, she went outside to hand herself over to the bodyguards. Ah, freedom! Now bring on one long, hot summer of fun. But first, I have to go shopping. Wearing these old-fashioned, disgusting clothes made me want to puke. Oh no! My parents have locked all of my credit cards! I can't even buy a soya milk ice latte now! Oof! How could my parents be so cruel? The worst part is, I had stupidly given all my cash and my phone to that girl! With no other options left, I reluctantly searched the girl's bag. A few old-fashioned clothes, some stupid books, and an unbranded lipstick? Huh? Was that all? How can people live like this? But, hmm, what's this? In her small notebook was a train ticket and an offer letter to work at Homestay Allen. So, looks like she's going there for a summer job. Hopefully that homestay has a bath with scented candles and a pool for me to sunbathe by. I need to work on my tan. I was glad to get off that flea-ridden thing and breathe in some fresh air. Hmm, now where was my ride? There was a short, chubby old man holding a board with the name Clara on it. Ah, the name on the train ticket was Clara. So this meant he was here for me? Ugh, he didn't even have flowers with him, and he could have at least combed his hair. So, turns out, that's Danny the manager and owner of the homestay. Honestly, if it wasn't for the circumstances, I would never have set foot in this stupid place. Oh, how the day got worse. Without even being allowed to rest my weary feet, Danny gave me work. Housekeeping. It was a joke, wasn't it? My nails were not made for menial jobs. Life here was horrible. I had to get up so stupidly early that it was still dark out, then clean a dozen dusty old bedrooms. After that, I would do the laundry, dry the towels and bedding, fold them, and arrange them neatly into each room. At noon, I also had to help the chef here, Anna, prepare lunch, and I was also forced to wash a mountain of gross dishes. I had never done such silly chores like this at home. Instead, they were always done for me. Didn't expect them to be this exhausting. <laughs> you should put them in order, so they won't break. Ugh, where did this nosy guy come from? Are you lecturing me? I replied crankily and walked away. Suddenly... Oh no! This was the ninth time I'd broken stuff since I'd arrived here. And that wasn't counting my poor broken nails. I quickly bent down to clean up, but... 
Ouch! I cut my finger on one of the pieces. The guy quickly ran over and bandaged my wound. Bond, that's my name. Huh? What's this? Did he just wink at me? My heart was pounding. Um, I mean, he was cute. Yeah, he was really cute. Um, I'm K- Clara. Go do something else. Leave this to me. Realizing that I'd been staring at Bond for a while, I hurriedly got up and rushed to the kitchen. Nice to meet you, Clara. I'm your new colleague. Well, that's not so bad. At least I have someone to share my workload with and to chat. The next morning, I was cleaning the floor, half asleep, when Bond came over, put an AirPod in my ear, and winked at me. Imagine you're dancing. Then you won't feel so tired anymore. Okay, this sounded kind of lame, but at least no one else was around to see me, so I decided to just go with it. So I gave it a try, with Bond, <laughs> and I relaxed a little. Well, I didn't expect it to be so much fun. That night, as I was about to turn off the light, I heard a knock at the door. It was Bond. He wanted to show me a secret, so he took my hand and led me to the beach. Yes, we were holding hands, and his hand was really warm. He took me to a sandy beach and shone his flashlight at his feet. Something was moving under the fine white sand. Ew! What was that? I clung to his arm in fear. Aww, little turtles, I exclaimed as they slowly emerged from under the sand. Yes, they're cute, aren't they? Let's give them a hand. They have to get to the sea before dawn. I hesitated because I thought this was so stupid. When the sun rises, they'll be easily spotted and eaten by predators. Fine, since Bond pleaded... I had no choice but to sacrifice my sleep to escort the baby turtles to the sea. Why would their mom just abandon her babies like that? Their mom protected them when they were eggs, and now it's time for them to start fending for themselves. I bet they don't mind. You see, they're all trying their best to crawl towards the sea. But it was us who helped them. Then they'll be very grateful to you. And so am I. Whoa, I never felt like this before. It felt like my heart was aching, but in a good way? Thinking about it, I suppose this was the first time I'd ever helped anyone before. Now I kinda understood why my parents did what they did. They just wanted me to be more independent and stop hanging around with those vain, show-off girls. They sure would be pleased if they could see me now, with this sweet and gentle guy. He was the total opposite of the rich boys back home. When I was hurt, he made sure I was okay. He opened my eyes to new experiences, and he didn't try to impress me with dumb flowers and expensive gifts. I've been thinking about Bond all day, and this is the 1,001st time I've peeked at him. I think I'll have to confess my feelings before I go crazy. So that evening, after finishing all my work, I knocked on Bond's door. Huh? Why was a teary-eyed Miss Anna standing there? Then she told me the shocking truth. Bond had left without saying goodbye. Panicked, I walked into the room, but there was nothing left of his. Nothing! No! This couldn't be happening! I hadn't even had a chance to confess yet! The next day, I felt so down. It sucked not having Bond here. But then in my zombie state... I accidentally picked up the newspaper at the front desk. O.M.G. On the front page was a picture of... Bond! God, I couldn't believe it. He was the son of a famous billionaire and they were looking for him. Turns out, I wasn't the only one who'd run away from home. But why did he leave so suddenly? He could have told me the truth. He could have said bye. Ugh! My untold feelings for him felt like an unreachable splinter in my side. I couldn't carry on like this. I needed to find Bond. With my meager salary, I got on the train back to the city, imagining seeing Bond again. 
This is without a doubt the most nervous I'd ever been in my entire life. It didn't matter how much I pleaded my case and explained that I was Bond's friend. The security guards refused to let me in. I was about to leave when suddenly I saw Bond from afar. He was with a girl. What in the world is this? I tried to strain my eyes to see. My god, isn't that me? No, it's the girl I hired to pretend to be me. What was she doing with Bond? And why did they look so close? Could it be? Ugh, look at them flirting. What an eyesore. But don't get it wrong, trust me. This is no happy family. That woman there isn't my mom. She's Rochelle, our housemaid. I repeat, housemaid. But it looks like she has her sights set on becoming my stepmom. Ugh. We only hired her because after my mom passed away, Dad and I struggled to deal with our grief, and our clumsiness as well, so tidying the house didn't take priority. I suppose Rochelle was an okay maid. Can't deny that she's a good cleaner. And her cooking is tasty. However, recently, I've noticed that she always cooks Dad's favorite meals. Also, they laugh and flirt and constantly give each other these gooey-eyed looks. Yuck! Today, she even took out her handkerchief and attentively wiped my dad's sweaty forehead. Who does she think she is? She definitely wanted to hypnotize dad. If she thought she'd have a slot in this house, she was totally wrong. I needed to do something about this. I had to talk to dad right away. Dad, mom didn't pass away that long ago, but it looks like you've already lined up her replacement. Didn't you hurt mom enough by reconnecting with your ex right before she died? What do you mean, replacement? Brittany, you're being childish and unreasonable. I don't know, and I don't care. But I want Rochelle to get out of our house immediately. She's for sure trying to get something out of you. Okay, fine. If you insist. But make sure you find a new housemaid to replace her. Ugh. So it turns out that finding a new maid who's actually good is nearly impossible. Dozens of people came to try out, but none of them were as considerate as Rochelle. Okay, after all, we still needed a maid, so I reluctantly let Rochelle stay until I found someone new. This didn't mean I was going to let my annoyance for her slide. I decided that while I was stuck in the same house as her, I may as well play some tricks on her to let out my anger. When she decided to cook, again, the divine chicken soup that my dad loved so much, I kindly added a little salt to make it more savory. But somehow, my dad still praised her delicious food. He must just be flattering her, right? So I tried it for myself. What? How could she do that? It tasted amazing. Ugh. Another time, I copied this trick I saw on TikTok by sticking layers of food wrap on Rochelle's door then acting like there was an emergency. Quick, the oven is making weird noises. I think something's burning. Rochelle quickly ran out of the room and I couldn't help but laugh my head off. Her face was really funny. She then gave me this bewildered look and smiled helplessly. Ugh, why did this woman never get mad? Okay then, let's step it up a notch. I decided to play the ultimate trick. Knowing that Rochelle was scared to death of cockroaches, I cut a cockroach shape out of paper and put it behind the fabric of her nightlight. That night, I was dozing off when I heard a screechy scream, ah, coming from Rochelle's room. Aha, success. But she was so terrified that she fainted. Oops. Do you know what the most annoying thing is? Even after all the trouble I've caused her, Rochelle was still super sweet to me. She was always offering me cookies and asking me about my day and stuff. I felt like she was trying to play the role of a mother, and I didn't like that at all. She couldn't fool me. I knew she only put up with me to please my dad. Thanks to Rochelle, I could never be at ease, even in my own home. But recently, a very special person has come into my life and lit up my mood. It was totally by chance. That day, it had rained like crazy, so there were puddles everywhere. 
I was on my way home from the grocery store when a car drove whizzing by. I thought I was going to get a free bath. But then suddenly, an arm pulled me back and shielded me with his body. Just like in a romantic movie, standing there was a boy, soaking wet, asking if I was okay. Aww, he had totally swept me off my feet. We walked together for a while, and he told me his name's Chris, and he lives in the next neighborhood. That's it! I needed to find a way to impress Chris and also thank him for helping me. So, after some careful thinking, I decided to bake him a cake. I'd seen Rochelle bake before. It looked easy peasy. So I baked one and gave some to my best friend Sue to try. But she spat it out and said, Ew, gross! Hmm. I sadly sat in the kitchen, staring at my pathetic cake, and wondered where I'd done wrong. That's when Rochelle stepped into the room. But to my surprise, instead of laughing at me, she patted me on the shoulder. Come here. I'll teach you how to cook. Rochelle was a good cook, so I'd be stupid not to learn from her. This doesn't mean I like her, though. I just want to win my crush's heart. So after that, each day after school, Rochelle gave me a cooking lesson. Okay, so maybe she wasn't as bad as I first thought. We tried out different recipes together and came up with our own perfect formula. And finally, I could bake a lovely heart-shaped chocolate cake by myself to confess my love to Chris. And you know what? He said, yes. I was so deeply in love with Chris that I totally forgot about my conflict with Rochelle. Chris often came over to my place. My dad and Rochelle loved him. So now, besides my dad's favorite food, Rochelle also makes Chris's favorites too. She's incredible. She could remember everything Chris loves and hates, even the trivia, like he's allergic to peanuts. We were just like a family, and I have to admit, it felt kind of good. And then, out of literally nowhere, the shock of my life happened. My dad passed away from cancer. I didn't even know he was ill. As you might guess, I totally broke down and didn't want to do anything after that. My mom and dad had both left me, just within a single year. But... At least I still had Rochelle and Chris beside me. Rochelle took care of me like I was her actual daughter. I was going through such a tough time in life, but having them around made me feel like I wasn't completely alone. The grief had to fade away eventually, and it's gonna be okay from now on, I thought. Until one day, I was baking cupcakes when my dad's lawyer appeared and showed me the will. Turns out, my dad had left the house to me but only on the condition that I had a guardian. Some woman named Laura. Huh? That's odd. I don't know anyone named Laura. But, wait, I think I've heard this name from someone. Oh, my mom. When she was in her last days, mom once told me that my dad had been talking to his ex again. And her name was Laura. Could it be her? Did he seriously make his ex my guardian? Unbelievable! I had to get to the bottom of this, but how could I find this mystery Laura? I had no family, well, besides my uncle Colin, who was living in France. So I contacted him and told him everything. He flew back at once, and although I hadn't seen him in years, I couldn't hold back my emotions and ended up sobbing on his shoulder. And then he told me the horrible truth. Laura is none other than the woman who had just walked through the door. It was Rochelle, the woman who had been living in my house. I couldn't believe my ears. What on earth is going on? So Rochelle moving in was no coincidence? My dad sneakily snuck her in as a maid so they could be together? My pain and disappointment were overwhelming, but I had to calm down so I could think rationally. I knew I needed to be smart and outplay Rochelle at her own game. Since then, I started watching Rochelle and noticed something strange. Rochelle and Chris were a bit too close and intimate. I often saw them whispering to each other when they thought I wasn't looking. What did this mean? Could it be that Rochelle was trying to coax my boyfriend into one of her dark schemes? Or worse still, 
Was the guy I loved cheating on me with an older woman? My suspicions deepened. When a few days later, Chris told me he was sick, so I had to take the school bus for a couple of days. And Rochelle also asked me for a few days off. Hmm, could it just be coincidence? I didn't think so. So I decided to be a detective for once. Right after Rochelle left, I started following her. And with no surprise, she went to my boyfriend's house. Hi, Mom. Excuse me? Mom? She's his mom? So that means she not only flirted with my father, but also planted her son to distract me to take over my family's property? I trusted them. How could they be so cruel? Suddenly, I remembered a detail that I didn't notice until now. After eating the food she'd cooked, for some reason, my father became weaker and weaker and eventually passed away. Did she poison him? If that's the case, then she really is a poisonous snake in human disguise. I immediately broke up with Chris and fired Rochelle, then went home and told Uncle Colin everything. At least I had him on my side. Now what we need to do is refute her custody of the property. I'll take care of everything, and you just have to do what I say. Then, Uncle Colin helped me prepare a lawsuit against Rochelle and her son for fraud. Those two will pay the price for what they did to my father and me. Oh, but the thing is, now Rochelle didn't live here, it felt so empty. <sighs> I was so angry with her, but I also found myself missing her too. I loved and trusted her, and Chris too. And feelings like that don't just vanish overnight, but when I was still thinking about it, there was the lawyer, again. And he was accompanied by Uncle Colin. What's happening now? Miss Brittany Jensen hereby transfers the entire estate of 25 Oakwell House to Mr. Colin Jensen, as signed by both parties. Huh? Signed? When did I sign that? I snatched the paper and shouted, Scam! I never saw this paper! Uncle, what is this? Please say something! I don't know. Just follow the legal documents. No, 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 no! So Uncle Colin was just pretending to care, when really he just wanted to trick me into signing over my house? Oh God, thinking about it, it must have been that day. The day where he gave me a bunch of papers to sign, claiming that they were about me suing Rochelle and Chris. OMG, the lying con! At the time, I'd been so upset that I only skimmed the first page without looking at the following ones. I was too careless. From tomorrow, Miss Brittany Jensen will have to return all assets to Mr. Colin Jensen. You have 24 hours to prepare. I tried shouting at my uncle, and then I tried reasoning with him, but he didn't care. He just smirked at me and told me that he was just taking what was rightfully his. Ugh, what a vile man. So now, I have nothing left. I was kicked out of my own house and deceived by my own uncle. I don't know why I accidentally passed Chris's house just as he opened the door to take a delivery and our eyes met. I turned and started to run away, but Chris caught up with me and grabbed my hand. Even after the awful way I treated them both, Rochelle and Chris still invited me inside and made me dinner. I ashamedly told them what happened. Then Rochelle told me everything. It turns out that my father found out that he had cancer a while ago, but he didn't tell me because he saw how upset I was after losing mom, and he was afraid I would worry too much. Rochelle saw his health deteriorating and figured out what was wrong, so she volunteered to take care of him because she still cared for him. But as a friend, nothing more. As for the will, my dad understood Uncle Colin all too well and didn't trust him, so he gave custody to Rochelle. But unexpectedly, in the end, I still stupidly fell into his trap. As for Chris, I really didn't know you two knew each other until you brought him home. But at that time, I didn't want to confess I was his mother and affect your relationship. I'm sorry, Brittany. Britt, please stay here with me and Mom. We'll get through this tough time together, okay? That's right, darling. No matter what, we'll never abandon you. I... I... I'm sorry. I misunderstood you both. 
It's okay. Everything will be fine from now on. You'll never have to do this alone. Yeah, every dog has its day. This is totally not wrong. My life is nothing like my previous wealthy one, but I have something that my conniving, vulturous uncle doesn't have, and that's people who love and care about me. What my uncle did was wrong, and Rochelle and Chris are helping me to make a legal case against him. As for now, well, I still haven't given up on my passion for cooking and still practice with my master every day. <laughs> and you know what? I just won first prize at the city cooking competition. Right, I better go, as I have a big treat planned for... Hmm, I wonder what's taking Valerie so long. She's been in that changing room for ages. Valerie, is everything okay in there? Don't force it if it doesn't fit. No, this is the last dress in store. I just need to breathe in for a bit longer. So? It's beautiful, isn't it? Valerie spun around. Then suddenly... Yep. Trying to squeeze into a dress two sizes too small for her, then it split. <sighs> the giggles around us started. Valerie blushed hurriedly paid for the dress and pulled me out of the shop. Why am I so fat? Ugh! I just want to feel pretty on my date. If I was skinny like you, I wouldn't have this problem. Poof! You know, it's not as easy as you think being thin. Yep, you heard me right. Being thin has its downsides. First of all, fashion. My nightmare! I have to wear an extra small size, and the clothes still hang off me. Actually, most of my clothes are from kids' stores, so I feel so untrendy. Then in winter, I have to wear tons of layers just so I don't freeze to death. And in the summer, <sighs> I can't wear cute clothes as I look like a coat hanger. Not only that, because I'm so skinny, people often ask me to do nonsense stuff. Once, I was studying in my room when suddenly I heard my sister Camilla calling me. She'd forgotten her keys and forced me to climb through her tiny window gap to get them. Seriously, I can't even. Then, on another occasion, Mallory made me crawl into the classroom locker to help her cheat on her Spanish test. Unfortunately, the teacher walked in while this was happening and gave me a week's worth of detentions, of course. Ugh. Oh my god, No Way Home is so good. I literally can't think of one bad thing to say about it. Yep, the part near the end? Ah! Yep, guess what? I'd managed to trap my foot in a manhole. Man, what rotten luck. I tried pulling my leg free, but it was no use. It wouldn't budge. There I was, freaking out that I'd be stuck here forever, and all my friends could do was huddle together and ask me questions like, Madeline, how on earth did you get your foot in such a small slot? Wow, that's unbelievable. Even Jaden, my bookworm friend, took out a ruler from his backpack and started measuring how wide the slot was. Grr. My dear friends, I'm being stuck down here. Stop gopping and help me! Finally, they tried helping me out, but in the end, we had to call the rescue squad. By this point, a massive crowd had gathered around me, and strangers were filming me. When I was finally free, everyone looked at me and held back their laughter. Even Parker, my crush, was smiling. Jeez, this was beyond embarrassing. But... A hot guy like Parker would never notice a moving skeleton like me anyway. <sighs> Don't think like that, Maddie. You're so pretty. Show me some confidence, would you? Valerie said as she nudged my arm. I put the book down and glared at her, and suddenly noticed Parker walking towards our table, smiling. And, yep, he said he wanted to sit with us. Even though I was cheering inside of my head, I still had to act composed. And oh my god, can you believe he even said I was cute? After that day, Valerie kept on encouraging me, saying he had definitely given me a green light. So finally, 
I gathered my courage to write down all my feelings for Parker on a note and clipped it to his notebook. At the end of class that day, he came to my desk and took my hand. Yay! Everything was fine, great even, until one day when the two of us were taking a romantic walk past the Swan Lake, Parker suddenly turned to me and said, You're so beautiful, Maddie. And if you just put on a few more pounds, I swear you'll be the hottest girl at school. Yes, I know, but it's hard for me to gain weight. No big deal. Just leave it to me. I'll fatten you up. I thought Parker was just joking, but it turns out he was being deadly serious. Since that day, every time we went on a date, instead of taking me to the bowling alley and movies as usual, Parker would take me out to eat. I swear, I've tried all the restaurants in our town. More surprisingly, on my birthday, Parker even gave me a bouquet of fried chicken. How romantic! But this didn't change anything, as my weight still stayed the same. Parker was disappointed when he peered over me and saw the scales hadn't budged. Then he sighed out. How come you and Valerie are friends, but look totally opposite? Here comes our adorable chubby Valerie. What? Parker called Valerie adorable again. This wasn't the first time either. Annoyed, I put down my fork and walked away from them. After that, I started avoiding Valerie. I did homework with other friends, sat with other girls at lunch, and every time I happened to see Valerie, I turned around and walked away. Honestly, I didn't want it to be this way, but... Just seeing her made me uncomfortable. But I couldn't bear to see my boyfriend call my BFF cute while well, he thought I was too skinny. <sighs> then summer break finally rolled around. I thought it'd be just me and Parker, but then he went off to a summer camp in Spain. <sighs> the plan was all ruined. So I spent a whole sunny day inside sulking. What's wrong? Are you bored because your lover is away? So why don't you take this time to surprise him when he returns? Surprise? A great idea popped into my head. But, but how do I get chubby? Easy peasy. Okay, if it's that easy, then show me. Okay, if you do my summer homework for me. What? She's such an opportunist but I really wanted to pile on the pounds and please Parker. So, without hesitation, I nodded in agreement. So, from that day on, I started following Camilla's weight gain plan. I switched veggies for greasy foods, and my main meal was always late at night. I also changed water for milkshakes, but I did have to stop drinking them when the smell of milk alone made me feel sick. Seeing me eating crazy like that, my parents worriedly said, Madeline, eating healthily is important, else your health will be affected. But I ignored their advice. This time, I definitely had to gain weight. Finally, after a month of trying, I gained some weight. Yay! I looked a lot more attractive now, didn't I? I was studying myself in the mirror when I heard my phone beep. It was Parker. He was coming over tomorrow with a present for me. The next day, I put on this hot dress that I'd never felt confident enough to wear before, and I asked Camilla to help me do my makeup. As soon as I finished, I eagerly waited for Parker in the living room. The doorbell rang, I excitedly opened the door, but as soon as he saw me, Parker quickly said, Oh, sorry, I have the wrong house. Then he started to leave. Huh? He didn't recognize me? This will be fun. No, honey, you're not mistaken. It's me. Your destiny. Madeline? Is that really you? Oh my, how on earth can you be this big? We've only been apart for a month. So, you don't think I'm prettier now? To my surprise, Parker shook his head. No, no, you're so fat now. It doesn't look okay. Lose some weight. Huh? This was so confusing. I thought he wanted me to be bigger. 
As annoying as this was, I still listened to Parker and tried to lose the weight I'd put on. <sighs> so it turns out that losing weight is far trickier than it sounds. Actually, it's a million times harder to lose it than it is to gain it. After a month of healthy eating and exercise, I gained another pound. Ugh! Stop eating that. Are you giving up already? You must try harder. What? It's just some popcorn. Why does he have to be so rude about this? I'll give you two weeks to lose weight. Else we're done. Huh? What did he just say? Done? He was the one who wanted me to gain weight in the first place. Now he was threatening to break up with me if I didn't lose it. How ridiculous. You know what? I don't need two weeks. Let's end it right now. It's clear you never loved me at all. You only like my appearance. If you truly cared about me, you wouldn't care what size I was. Then I walked off. Ugh. How could I have been so stupid? For the entirety of my relationship with that jerk Parker, I was blindly following him. I only cared about pleasing him, and it cost me so many things, including my best friend. I needed to apologize to her right away. I nervously knocked on the door, then waited. Finally, Valerie opened it, but on seeing me, she went to shut it. I'm so sorry, just let me explain, please. Valerie, I'm so sorry. It was all because I was afraid Parker would leave me for you. But I realize now that he's a massive jerk, and I was an idiot for ever trying to change for him. Jeez, you're crazy. Parker is totally not my type. I scratched my head and told her about how terrible Parker had treated me and how I'd foolishly listened to him. Man, that douchebag! Then she hugged me. Valerie confessed to me that she'd been trying to lose weight by lowering her calorie intake, but the pounds were coming off. And worse still, she felt weak and tired all the time. I nodded in agreement with her. So, from then on, Valerie and I made a promise to love ourselves, regardless of what size we were, and to never let anyone try and change us. And look, that's Walker and Joel, our awesome boyfriends who love us just the way we are. And you know what? It feels so good not caring what other people think. So, don't ever let idiots put you down. Because when you allow yourself to just be you, then you can finally realize just how beautiful you truly are. Here I was, standing in the middle of Christian's apartment with a dumbfounded look on my face. I know I dated a lot of guys, but could it really have been so many that I'd accidentally dated this guy twice? I took another look around the room. Oh my god, that hideous lamp and minuscule kitchen looked really familiar. I was feeling uneasy as I sat on the couch and stared at the guitar. Okay, now I was sure that I'd definitely been here before. Panicking, I made an excuse that my favorite TV show was about to start, so I had to go home. Then I ran out of there. From that moment on, I avoided Christian at all costs. He tried to call and message me a bunch of times, but I ignored them all. How was it possible that I couldn't remember dating him? I mean, okay, I suppose I had been on a bit of a dating streak recently but it was hardly enough to date myself into oblivion, right? Besides, if this was the case, shouldn't he be able to recognize me too? On the day we met, I was in a terrible mood, so was drowning my sorrows in a bar. I had a bit too much to drink, so when I walked out and accidentally bumped into Christian, I began blaming him. But instead of ignoring a drunk girl, he made sure I got home safely. After that... I don't know if it was by accident, fate, or if Christian was stalking me, but I seemed to run into him all the time. Hey, if the universe wanted us to hang out, then who was I to stop it? So I started talking to him and turns out we got on really well. Then, of course, came that day when he dropped the bombshell. He said he likes me, and I kind of like him too, so we started dating. Now, did you see how wrong this was? If I'm his ex then why did he approach me? Also, I mean, what are the odds for the both of us to just have zero recollection of each other? 
Or was he pretending not to know me? If so, then what were his purposes? Ugh, the best thing to do is to dump him first, right? Problem solved. But then one day, I got home from college to find Christian standing at my door with a bunch of groceries. He came by to cook me dinner. Oh, that's kind of sweet. Well, seeing as he's here, I should hold off on breaking up with him until after dinner, right? But man, it was so hard. All I could think about was how caring and thoughtful he was. Then suddenly, he said something that messed up my whole plan. My roommates are terrible cooks, especially my brother. So the two of them pester me to make all of their meals. Wait a minute. Did he just say brother and roommate? So it turns out he wasn't living alone. What a relief. That means there was still hope that I could have dated his brother or his roommate, not him. I just needed to figure out which one it was. I needed to find out more about them, so I praised him for more information. He told me that his brother was dumped by his ex in the worst way possible. He'd arranged a romantic dinner at a restaurant, and while he was talking, she screamed out that she wanted to break up. It was not only devastating for him, but also humiliating. Oh my god. That sounded so familiar. Because I often did that too. It's like my signature move. Could it be that the person I dated was his brother, Connor? If yes, then that would be great. It means I could continue dating Christian, right? To be honest, I really hope it's Connor. So all I needed to do was meet the guy and let him confirm it. But easier said than done. The guy was never home. Until one night. Christian and I were at a bar when we heard some loud noises coming from the booth next to us. A guy was yelling at a couple. Seeing that, Christian immediately ran over to them and stopped the guy. Turns out the guy yelling was Connor, and the couple were his ex and her new boyfriend. So... She was the one who broke up with him in that terrible way, not me? Now it's either Christian or his roommate. While I was in deep thought, Christian came back with two hot dogs in his hands. Hey, Christian! Suddenly, we heard someone calling his name. We turned around to see two guys standing behind us. It was none other than Christian's roommate, Wes, and his... Boyfriend! Yes, you heard me right, his boyfriend! So that means I didn't date him either? After that, I couldn't pay attention to the game anymore. In what way could this all make sense? But wait, maybe I was wrong. I mean, many apartments look the same, don't they? Seeing me zoning out, Christian nudged my arm, then handed me a hot dog. I thanked him and was about to take it when he snatched it back. Oh wait, you hate ketchup, because you always get ketchup stains on your clothes. Here, take this one. What did you just say? How did you know that? Oh, you did tell me once, don't you remember? I just gave an awkward smile. I'm 100% sure I hadn't told him that. So, there's no denying, Christian is my ex-boyfriend. It's settled. I'm breaking up with him. That night, I couldn't sleep, as all I could think about was Christian. He obviously remembered me because he knew about the ketchup thing. But why the act? Oh my, he definitely wants revenge, I'm sure of it. But, ugh, why did this suck so much? He was just some guy. I could find another boyfriend easy enough, right? But chances are, they wouldn't be as sweet and caring as Christian was. <sighs> One time when I was stressing out about my essay, he stayed up late so he could read it through for me and point out any typos. And whenever I was feeling down, he would send me a cake. Sometimes a box of donuts with a little note to cheer me up. I was definitely going to miss his cute ways, but I couldn't do this anymore. He had to go. So the next day, when I met Christian for lunch, I decided to take the opportunity to break up with him. But before I could say anything, we ran into a guy who claimed to know me. Oh my god, is that you, Sadie? Huh? Who is he? Oliver? My god, long time no see. You know Sadie? Christian? Hey, what a small world. Yeah, um, we used to date. My god. Guys, guys, this is Oliver, who happened to be Christian's former roommate, which, apparently, my ex. He used to live with Christian before Wes moved in. So that means, hooray! 
Christian wasn't my ex and wasn't longing for revenge. Yay! Although, it's kind of weird that Oliver didn't look at all familiar to me. Hmm, maybe I really did need to stop dating so much. This is crazy, but it made me realize something. I really had fallen for Christian. So, I decided to set up a romantic dinner in a nice restaurant so I could tell him. Christian, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I love you. I eagerly awaited for him to say it back, but no. Instead, he burst out laughing. Huh? And that's when everything came to light. Guess what? Christian really is my ex. When we were at the basketball match, I made a big mistake with the ketchup thing. I sensed you were sus, so I asked Oliver to pretend to be your ex. And it worked. <laughs> but, but why? What did I do to you to deserve that? Oh, wow, you really don't remember, huh? Well, just proves what a terrible person you are. You don't care what love is. You just like to mess with people's feelings, then move on to your next victim. Well, let me refresh your memory. We used to be a happy couple. Until one day you decided to end things without even an explanation. Right when I was having the hardest time. Things didn't go well at work and my mom was sick in the hospital. Did you know how heartbroken it made me feel? I... Then a month ago, when I saw you dump that guy in public, then walk past me without even recognizing me, I knew everything was a joke to you. So I came up with this plan, and I don't regret anything. Then he stood up and walked off. What? That couldn't be true, right? Because I had no recollection of what Kristen just said. But he seemed adamant it was true, so I went to see my doctor. Actually, ever since the accident, I haven't been back here for any extra checkup. And you know what? After several tests, I was diagnosed with memory loss. Well, that explained a lot. You see, a few months ago, I had a bicycle accident. I fell off a cliff, but luckily it wasn't high. I bumped my head, but I thought I was okay, as I still remembered my family and friends. Turns out, I only lost the memory about the period of time when I was dating Christian. How ironic. <sighs> but it was a big misunderstanding. You know, I have this bad habit that every time I feel someone is getting distant towards me, I save face by dumping them first. So maybe when Christian was busy taking care of his mom in the hospital, I misread the situation and ended things with him. Ugh, he was right. I am a horrible person. I can't believe I let an amazing guy like him go. But nope, not this time. I believe the universe gave me a second chance. That's why I met him again. So I ran to Christian's apartment to explain everything to him. But when I knocked on the door, Wes opened it. You just missed him. He's heading to the airport to visit his parents for a few weeks. What? I couldn't wait two more weeks. So I took a cab to the airport. But on the way, I got stuck in traffic. Ugh! How am I supposed to find him now? Wait a minute. I've seen this scene play out many times in movies. So, can you guess what I did next? Yep, I stepped out of the taxi and ran like a crazy person up the road. I looked into each taxi, hoping to find Christian, and... Do you believe it? I finally found him. He looked very shocked when he saw me getting into his cab. Before you kick me out, please let me explain. Then I began to tell him about my mom and how my dad and countless other men abandoned her. I was left terrified of being abandoned by someone I love, so my own irrational fear meant that when Christian was busy taking care of his sick mom, I thought it was a sign that he was about to dump me. So I ended things first with him. It's not because you didn't mean anything to me. On the contrary, you made me feel safe. I just like you so much that I didn't want to get hurt by you. Then I explained to him about my accident and why I don't remember him. Christian remained silent and kept his head down. It seemed like he didn't want to give me another chance. I tried, but I couldn't make him forgive me. So, feeling glum, I opened the car door to get out. But Christian took my hand and said, Sadie, I have missed you. Okay, fine. Let's give it another try. So that was it. Christian gave me a second, oh wait, actually, it's the third chance. <laughs> and can you guess what we did next? Well, 
I'm now sitting at the airport with Christian, waiting for our flight to his hometown to meet his parents. I would be lying if I said I wasn't nervous. Hi, Mia here. Not to brag, but since childhood, I've always been kinda a genius. I've already stacked up over 20 science-based awards, and by adding this one more trophy into my collection, I even got to skip a grade. Your achievements at such a young age are admirable. What's your plan next? Well, I've decided to drop out of school. Yep, that's my plan. With as impressive of a profile, I'm just one research paper away from being accepted onto the Space Up Astronomical Research Program. Why waste time on boring classes, right? But ugh, mom and dad didn't like the idea of me not graduating. So after a lot of compromises, I did get to move to Quebec with my grandparents for a year. But I still had to go to school there. And voila, here I am in Canada, ready to conquer my dream. But why was there this angry crowd in front of my new home? They were screaming, cursing, vandalizing. My grandparents secretly signaled me inside the back way, then glumly told me how the crowd were parents of the children who got food poisoning after attending Riverside School summer camp. The problem was, the food was provided by my grandparents' farm, and now the school is threatening to file a lawsuit and doesn't seem to be open for negotiation. That can't be. There must be a solution for this. So gathering up my courage, I knocked on the principal's door. Do I know you? Um, I don't think so, ma'am. I'm Mia Jones, granddaughter of Mr. Peterson, the rancher. Wait, Mia Jones from New York? Hmm, come in. The woman must have been Mrs. Robinson, the principal's wife. But does she know me? As soon as we sat down, she said, I will withdraw the charges for you. Oh, ma'am, really? I knew we could sort this out amicably. Oh, but my sweet child, I don't do charity. I know what you're capable of, so I will only drop the lawsuit if you make my daughter the top student at school. In other words, you'll exchange all test results with her. What do you think? What do I think? I think that's a crazy proposition. But if I didn't do this, then the form would go under. So, with a reluctant nod, I agreed. Then I was immediately taken to meet her daughter. I was expecting someone snooty and spoiled, but to my surprise, this super smiley girl greeted me. Hey, I'm Eliana, but just call me Elle. I'm so sorry about my mom. She's got it into her head that I need to excel at school, since my dad is the principal. Elle hesitated for a bit, then continued. Also, there's Nora, the super smart daughter of my dad's ex. Mom doesn't want me to suck and dad to favor this other girl over me, so... Thinking about it, my main purpose for coming here was to complete my astronomical research. I don't need any more A, so I smiled at Elle. Don't worry, I'll make sure you're the star student in no time. The next morning, I went to school with Elle, and wow, it looked so ancient and calm. Definitely distinctive from my stuffy school in New York. Elle introduced me to her friends, and they all seemed really welcoming. It's gonna be great here. Still holding the deal, I helped Elle answer the teacher's questions, exchanged assignments and homework with her, and soon, Elle had already climbed up to the top rank. On the contrary, I was at the bottom of the class. Oh wow, Elle's mom really wasn't kidding when she said her grades were bad. But that didn't matter to me anyway, because the only thing I care about is this amazing astronomy tower. Talk about heaven! What are you doing here? I turned around to see Nora, the girl Elle had mentioned before who is also the Astronomy Club's president. Hi, I'm Mia. I want to be part of your team. I have experience in studying astronomy and... Stop blabbering. Your grades suck, and we have a strict no idiots allowed policy. I told Nora to at least give me a chance to prove myself, so she sat me down and sniggered as she handed me an astronomy test. Easy peasy. I got all the answers right in just 10 minutes. But instead of welcoming me into the club, she accused me of cheating. Ugh! Nora didn't just dislike me. She also seemed to despise L2. Any chance she got to call us out on something, she would definitely take it. Sir, they're cheating. I... I just want to help Mia. Please, I'm so sorry. Huh? Who was helping who? Mia, you've got a lot of nerve. Your test is suspended. The whole class was giving me disapproving looks. Being this disrespected by my peers was a new experience for me. How could Elle tell life so calmly? Great, now that I was labeled a cheater, I would never get accepted into the astronomy club ever. Mia the cheater just had to find her way to get in there then. 
So, I waited until dark, then sneaked into the janitor's room to steal the key to the observation tower. <sighs> now I could freely study my favorite constellation without any interruptions. Montreal is close to the North Pole, so the night sky here is so clear that I could see all the stars. At this rate, my research could be done faster than expected. Then I would be out of here, leaving all of these childish rivalry dramas behind. One night, I was busy taking notes when someone opened the door and walked in. Who's there? Oh no! I hastily grabbed my papers and escaped through the emergency exit door. Who is the guy? Why is he here at this hour? The next morning, I pushed my way through the noisy crowd and saw the announcement on the school's pin board. The astronomy club warned outsiders not to use the observatory room and that there would be severe punishment once the reason trespasser was discovered. Shoot, the guy from last night must have snitched on me. Turned out, the snitch was Brandon, the new transfer student, and also the grandson of the founder of Space Up. It's a shame the incredible Sir Edward Foster's grandson was such a smug jerk. But that didn't stop all the girls from going cuckoo crazy for this Brandon guy. The ironic thing is, he kept on coming over to me and talking about astronomy. Huh? Doesn't everyone here see me as an insignificant kid? Is this yours? Brandon said while holding out a piece of paper. Oh. My. This was part of my astronomy research. Did I drop it in the tower that night? But how did Brandon know it was mine? Flustered, I quickly made an excuse and left. I couldn't stop worrying about Brandon finding out I was the one who used the observatory room. If anyone knows about it, it'd be an instant suspension. I was busy thinking when suddenly the whole class burst into applause. As it turned out, they were praising my excellent essay on constellations. Well, it's known as Elle's essay now. Then the teacher turned to read the class's worst essay. My favorite star is Justin Bieber. Every time I see him, I think if only he was my husband. Everyone started laughing. <sighs> no prize for guessing whose name was on this one. Mia, I suggest you learn something from your friend Elle. I turned to look at Elle and saw her smug face. She even joined in with the others to make fun of me. Was she really that stupid to write that essay? Or did she intend to embarrass me? When I got home, Elle was already waiting on the porch to apologize to me. I helped you as promised. Shouldn't your mom keep her promise too? Get the lawsuit dismissed now. Then I'll help you finish your final exam successfully. Else, I'm not doing it. She's on it, Mia. Don't worry. I know you're leaving after a year anyway, and I also know that you're the one who snuck into the observatory. So, if you want to leave peacefully, at least help me and Brandon to get together. You and Brandon? But what does it have to do with me? Al then told me that Brandon was so impressed by her astronomy essay that he asked her out to discuss it further. But of course, she knew nothing about it, so she had a plan. I'll have my AirPod on, and you gotta stay on the line with me throughout the date so you could tell me the answers to his questions. If we become official, I'll buy you that telescope you bang on about so much. You know, that thingy-majiggy. Celestron! Celestron Telescope! Oh man, she really knew my weak spot. Alright then, we have a deal. That weekend, Elle and Brandon went for a walk in Jerry Park while I stayed at home eavesdropping on their conversation through the phone. I see you have a passion for the Astros. So why didn't you join the astronomy club? Just cause I'm busy with my studies, and I also have piano practice, you know. Really? Oh, in the paper, you mentioned the black hole Sagittarius A. You seem to have done a lot of research about it. Could you tell me more? Although Elle seemed frantic having me put words in her mouth, everything went pretty smoothly. Only one thing, the more Brandon and I talked, the more I realized we had so much in common. Even if it was through Elle, I still felt a connection with him. I thought everything was going well between them, but no. One day, Elle came to me in a fit of anger and said Brandon had turned down her love confession. I want you to go talk to him and figure out why. I need to know the reason. What? Why don't you just ask him? Because I'm me, Eliana Robinson. I don't ask such embarrassing questions. So I was the one who had to make the embarrassing move? Also, call me. I want to hear it myself. Gosh, this bossy girl. And so I had to drag Brandon to the quiet rooftop while my phone was secretly on a call with Elle so she could follow the conversation. Okay, let's get straight to the point. Why did you reject Elle? Um, because I like someone else? If you already like someone else, then why hang out with her? Because only when I go out with Elle, 
I can talk to the person I like. It's disappointing, though. Why don't you recognize me? I quickly ended the call, hoping L didn't understand what was going on. He already knew I was behind L's words all this time? It turned out Brandon had met me once in the city's ranking contest for students in 6th grade, in which I surpassed him and won the first prize. He'd never met a kid smarter than him in astronomy before, so when he saw me again at school, he instantly recognized me. Only, he couldn't understand why my score was so low. Brandon wanted to talk to me, but he said that all he received was a cold shoulder. I felt a bit guilty, but it's all because he told the school administration I snuck into the astronomy room. But it turned out Nora was the one who reported me. Nora was there at the time too. By the way, why do you have to do Elle's homework? I told Brandon about my contract with Mrs. Robinson and apologized for not thinking about his feelings when I agreed to be behind his and Elle's date. I see. Follow me. There's something you should know. Brandon took me to see Nora. She didn't welcome me at first, but when Brandon told her about my secret, Nora immediately changed her attitude. I should've known. Someone like Elle couldn't make such progress. She and her mom are deceiving everyone again. Then, Nora told me how she was secretly investigating the food poisoning case because, on the day of summer camp, she saw Mrs. Robinson and Elle doing something shady in the school kitchen. Why should I trust you? Elle told me that you have it in for her. So maybe you're just trying to ruin her life. <sighs> Please, why do I have to do that? Believe it or not, your precious best friend is trying to embarrass you in front of the whole school. What is this? In the lecture hall, Elle was sitting in front of a screen which said, Mia's grandpa poisoned us? We rushed to the lecture hall to find her there, telling people that my grandparents were the ones that catered spoiled food. And that I had no shame copying her works, cheating many times, and even stealing Brandon from her while they were dating. So she must have figured out that Brandon liked me, huh? Even so, why didn't she talk to me directly? How dare she make things up about me and my family? Before I could do anything, Brandon changed what was on the screen to a video of me winning the Young Minds Intelligence Contest. Everybody started buzzing when they recognized who I was. Someone even spoke loudly. I watched that show! Is that really Mia? Elle's face turned pale as people started doubting her. Then Nora snatched the mic from Elle's hand and said, So, now we've made it clear that Mia isn't dumb at all. Then what about the poisoning at the camp? Did anyone find it strange how only Elle and her mother showed no sign of poisoned symptoms that day? That's because they were the ones who poisoned the food and blamed it on Mia's grandparents. The screen continued to show a clip of Elle's mom looking shady as she spoke to some man. She did all that just to ruin Mia's grandparents' good reputation. Then she would hire this man to buy the farm on her behalf for a ridiculously low price. What did you say? Oh my god, the principal has been standing at the door and witnessed everything. Everyone, out! When there were only four of us left in the room, Elle furiously shouted, How dare you! You're just the outcome of your cheater mom, remember? Don't play dumb with me. You're well aware that my mom didn't cheat on Mr. Robinson, and that your mom is the one who lied to him to ruin his and my mom's wedding. And then what? Lying again that you're his daughter to force him to stay with her? You and your mom are awful people. Mr. Robinson stood in between them and stopped the argument. Oh, he didn't look too well either. Turns out, he already knew Nora's mom was wrongfully framed, and didn't cheat on him at all. And that's why he always tried to make it up to Nora. But learning that Elle wasn't his daughter was one big bombshell. After knowing what his wife and daughter did, he decided to resign. He made amends with Nora's mom and they're giving it another go. After the truth came out, Elle and her mom left without a trace. I say, good riddance to bad news. My grandparents were cleared of the food poisoning allegations and now their business is booming again. With Brandon and Nora's help, I collected enough data and finished my assignment with flying colors. Now to quit high school and pursue my dreams. Heh, <laughs> just kidding. I'm just going on a short trip to Mont Megantic National Park to see the Northern Lights with Brandon and Nora. I've decided to stay and finish high school here, so I can continue pursuing my passion for astronomy with my two- 98, 99, one more to go, and 200,000 followers. <laughs> it looks like I'm making quite an impression on the world. Hey. You're looking at the hottest beauty and lifestyle influencer of Park Springs High School. Beauty and brains? I have both. <laughs> it's not surprising, is it? Obviously, a girl like me gets loads of attention. Oh, 
There are Nerdy Ben is, my number one fanboy. He's always following me around school and offering to help me with, well, everything. I can't blame him. I mean, I'm basically his queen. Hey, Ben. I didn't see you at my locker as usual. Are you... good? I... I'm out of money today, so... Wait, Ben? Don't say it like that. People will think I mugged you or something. I never ask for those groceries or sundries. Y yes, you don't. Um, sorry. Okay, so that was weird. Then things got even stranger when I overheard Christine telling her friends that after being exposed, an anonymous IG singer's followers had skyrocketed to a whopping 500,000. But the thing was, she went to school here. She's that nobody in bio class, Stella. Stella hurried past me into class, followed by a flock of people trying to take her pick and asking her to sing. Blah, blah, blah. Some of the boys even offered to take her home after class. Poof, please. What were they thinking? Ugh. She could play the fragile and confused act on these losers, but she didn't fool me. The dropped book scenario was so overrated. But, huh? Why was Ben rushing to pick it up? What a traitor. Ben? Where's my homework? He couldn't even come up with a better excuse than, Um, I went out last night. This was baloney. I just heard him offer to help Stella with her homework. And guess what? This girl, still with her Little Miss shy facade up, told Ben that she could do her own essay. Ugh. Did she think she was Beyonce or what? Acting all high and thinking she's the beacon of the universe? I was furious. So she wanted a taste of fame, huh? Let's just say, as a senior in this field, having experienced its downside, it was time I taught her some manners. <laughs> After that, I made sure she became the main topic of every single talk in school. Hey, she needed to learn how this fame game worked. Everyone was giggling, pointing, and whispering behind her back. She had to cover herself with a hoodie that hid half of her face and walk through school in anxiety. Yeah. I know that paranoid feeling all too well when you obsess with why people keep on giving you odd looks. Then one day, I was putting my books back in my locker when I glimpsed someone running past me crying. It was Stella. And she dropped a note that said, If I were you, I wouldn't have shown up at school ever again. You're a joke. Gosh, do people even say these things? This was way too harsh. What happened? For God's sake. He didn't think I was the one who wrote this, did he? From that day on, Ben completely ignored me. And worse, he was glued to Stella, comforting her as people talked behind her back. Ugh. Then one day, I was tying my shoelaces when I heard some cheerleaders trying to open someone's phone. Right at that moment, Stella stepped out of the shower stall. Upset to see others violating her privacy, she tried to fight back. But oh boy, this wallflower couldn't even make them budge. <sighs> Fine, I'll help her. But only this time. You tattletale! You think you run the place now just because you're popular? Go tell Ben I didn't put that note in your locker. Better yet, call him right now. Oh, come on! Just run to the bleachers and tell that nerd. Go! What are you looking at? I went over to the bleachers to find Ben comforting Stella. What now? Snitching on me again? Actually, Stella was just telling me that you didn't write that note. Could you be any more foolish? So, you're just gonna bluntly do whatever I tell you to? Don't mind her. It's just who she is. A bit rough, but a truly great friend. Uh, I don't make friends. Yeah, I'd learned it the hard way. 
Back in my early days on Instagram, the only friend I trusted posted a video of me changing in the school's shower stall. I still had my tea inside my shirt, but that taught me a cruel lesson about friendships and fame. When you're famous, people will always want something from you. You can't trust anyone at all. You hear me? Stella! Who's that? Liam, Stella's friend from the music club. They look good together, don't they? What? Are you jealous of him or something? For that silly chick? Ben didn't say anything, but just blankly stared at them. Huh? He never looked at me like that anymore. Now I was no longer the Instagram queen. That meant I was no longer his queen. <sighs> it was true there was no one I could trust. A few days later, there was a big football match. We were going up against our rival school for the final, and Stella was singing the national anthem. Even the mayor and a local TV station showed up for it. Crazy! Ben was part of the AV team, so when some dude told me Ben wanted to talk to me, I went to the AV room to find him. What did he want to talk about? Hopefully not something to do with Stella. Ugh. But as I got there, no one was around. Huh? Right at that moment, the screen showed Stella stepping up to the podium preparing to sing. But instead of the soothing melody, a string of strange, distorted sounds came out of her mic. What was going on? What are you doing here? Ashley! He pushed me aside and hurriedly fixed the sound system. And just a minute later, things were back to normal and Stella could restart the song. Ben gave me an accusing look, then dragged me behind the bleachers, where we met up with Stella and Liam. Then Ben told her I'd messed with her mic. Oof! How could he think I was capable of something like that? Meanwhile, this Liam guy stepped in, saying it could have been a technical error. Yeah. Whatever. I went to leave, but Liam caught up with me. Weird. Weren't he and Stella having a thing? He immediately denied it, saying they were just acquaintances from music club. But you, I've been wanting to get closer to you for a while. You're the true Instagram queen, not Stella. Whoa, this guy was a top-class jerk. Just a minute ago, he had his hands wrapped around Stella and now he was trying to leech onto me. He even started leaning in to kiss me on the cheek. Quickly, I dodged it, as I met Stella's gloomy look from behind. Yikes, it was time to get out of here. I didn't sleep so well. Ugh. All this stress was bad for my skin. So I was groggily making my way along the school corridor when Stella stormed up to me. It was you, wasn't it? You were so mean to me, threatening to delete my IG account because you were so jealous Ben had left you for me. Now it's really gone, and it's all your fault. What are you talking about? I had nothing to do with your stupid account. Yeah, I gossiped about you to mess with you a bit, but that was all. And you, you think I did it too? Excuse me? Did he just ignore me? And there Ben was, my so-called friend who turned his back at me right at the moment I needed him the most. And I'd never threatened to delete her account. Why did she make it up? Was she that jealous of me and Liam yesterday? What's this? An unexpected message from Liam said, Hey Ashley, don't worry sweetie, I've got your back. What do you say we meet at 8 p.m. in the park? Ugh. This shameless, two-faced jerk. What was he up to this time? So after class, I slid a note into Stella's locker, pretending to be from Liam, saying, I have a surprise for you. See you at 8 p.m. in the park. I arrived on time to find Liam already waiting. He kept putting on this simping act like he was madly in love with me or something. I can help you prove everything, and I only ask for one tiny favor that you'll be my girlfriend. You can do that? But how? Well, you can just simply put the blame on someone else. Let's say, Ben? Oh, honey, you don't have to do anything. 
Just come to me and let your man handle it. Ugh, this guy made me want to barf. But I still had to play it cool so I could figure out what this dude had up his sleeves. Sounds interesting, but I want to know more. How are you going to carry out your master plan? Honey, I've already got all the pieces of evidence in my hands. <laughs> you mean... That's right. I was the one who deleted Stella's IG account, and I know a way to blame it on someone else. You did what? Ashley, I let my jealousy blind me. So when I saw him flirting with you right in front of me, I... I just lost it. At least you're not the only fool around here. He played both of us. And for the record, he's so not my type. <laughs> <laughs> Your type? Hmm, let me guess. Someone like... Ben? <laughs> He's such an idiot. He'd never realize I have feelings for him. But you're more of his type than I am. Besides, the way he just abandoned me when I needed him the most. Uh, Ashley, I didn't mean to hurt you like that. You've been there the entire time? Yeah, I've heard it all. Including the part about how you have feelings for me. Look, it's not what you think. I'm not into Stella that way. The thing is, I saw her singing at a coffee shop and realized right away she's my favorite anonymous singer on Instagram, so I sort of revealed her identity online. One thing led to another... I felt so guilty I just stayed by Stella's side and accidentally pushed you away. And it's not that I don't trust you. After you left, I tried to convince everyone you didn't do it, but they didn't believe me. Then Stella showed me the note in her locker of Liam asking her out. And I recognized your handwriting. I got worried, so... So... you didn't turn on me? Yeah. I know you can seem cold sometimes. But deep down, you have a good heart. So, turns out that Stella going viral meant some local lounge singer had lost a lot of gigs. So she hired Liam to delete Stella's account for good. This guy was no joke. The note, the cheerleaders, the mic accident. He was responsible for it all. Luckily for me, I'd managed to put my phone on record mode for the entire conversation I had with him. So the next day... I went ahead and reported him to the principal. Well, no bad deed goes unpunished, so I hope you enjoy your indefinite suspension, Liam. <laughs> as for me, I no longer go solo anymore, as I have a new friend by my side, who now has quit social media and enjoys her passion for singing. And Ben is still Ben. Such a doofus. But my doofus... Hi, I'm Kaylee from Washington. I might dress like a boy, but I'm actually the girliest girl you could ever meet. Before I continue, please like and subscribe. I was born with shiny blonde hair and blue eyes, just like my mom. I never met my dad, but it wasn't really a big deal. There's no need to live in some fancy castle to feel like a princess. I was already one in my mom's eyes. She always pampered me with the cutest things in the world. You could give Rapunzel a run for her money, sweetheart. But tragically, Mom left me in an accident when I was 10, and I had to move in with Selena, my mom's friend. She lived in a mansion where there were so many people dressed just like her. As soon as they saw me, they started to ooh and ah at me. What a porcelain doll. Bet she'll win any beauty pageants. She's just too lovely to be real. Shh, Miss Sanchez here doesn't like anyone who's prettier than her daughter. Yeah, she's been in a foul mood ever since the master left for his mistress. I only caught a bit of what they said before Selena dragged me into a corner. Sweetie, you heard them. Boys are bad news. Just look at your dad, for example. So stay away from them. Got it? Um... And the only way to repel them is if you look more like them. Then she told me to wear contact lenses to hide my blue eyes, cut my long locks, threw away my dress collection, and bought me clothes that basically drowned me. And voila, I looked just like a teenage boy. One day, I was alone in the kitchen when I heard someone shouting, Bring me two smoothies now! 
I brought in two avocado shakes, but accidentally splashed one all over this girl's face, turning her into Shrek. Watch what you're doing! My daughter's angel face is destined to be Miss USA! How dare you! I... I'm sorry, ma'am. Relax, mom. Avocado face masks are all the rage anyway. Sadly, I still had to take my punishment, but suddenly the girl walked towards me. Hey, I'm Beatrix. Let's go and play. But I'm... Don't worry, I'm here. My mom won't punish you anymore. Then she took me to her room. Wow, she even has a castle inside? Beatrix then put some wigs and makeup on me. I looked at myself in the mirror, and memories of my mom came rushing back. I quickly pulled out the photo of her that I carried with me all the time. We looked so alike. I was about to take my lenses out when Selena stormed in and dragged me back to my room. Don't you ever let me catch you here again and keep your distance from Little Mistress. We're not from the same world as people like them. Remember that? But little did Selena know, Beatrix had just asked her mom to allow me to go to school with her. And ever since then, we've been literally inseparable. I mean, literally. She clung to me from living room to kitchen, from home to school. Honestly, the only time I could have a moment of peace was when I went to the restroom. Phew. Oh, maybe not. And each time we hung out was more than torture. I had to fight against the urge to act girly, hit my own hands whenever they started to reach for those pretty things, and now they ended up swollen. Think I'll glue them in my pockets next time. Then, one day, I arrived at school to the most terrible news ever. Kaylee, one of our female rugby players got injured, so I put you on the team. What on earth? I don't even know what rugby is. Here's Austin, your rugby coach. If you need anything, he's your guy. You know him? He might be handsome, but something about him screams bad news. People call him Awful Austin. You better watch out. And she wasn't exaggerating. At all. On the very first day, he already pushed me to my absolute limits in training. That I almost passed out. In the agility ladder exercises, I got my feet tangled up in the line and fell to the ground. But instead of a hand, all I got was his soulless look. Then one time, I missed the ball, causing it to hit another player. Hey, is this a joke to you? Do it properly. Keeping all Celine's words in mind, I zipped my mouth up and ignored him, who was definitely a boy. Oi, what's the attitude? You're bringing the whole team down. See? Cat got your tongue? Faking dumb doesn't work here. From tomorrow, extra training. No excuses. Beatrix was right. He was a devil. I was dragging my aching body home after training. When I noticed a cute cat and stopped to pet it, the cat ran away, so I followed it, and ended up at the back gate of the school, which was totally off limits. I've never been here before. Whoa, look at this beautiful mural. It's so mesmerizing. What you doing here? Awful Austin? Um, I just... Anyway, did you paint this? It's amazing. Of course not. Stop prying. He was such a terrible liar. But to be honest, I didn't expect some jock like him to be interested in art, let alone actually be good at it. What are you two doing here? Don't move! Oh no, the guard has spotted us! Austin immediately grabbed my hands and started running. We hid in a small alley, and he pressed me against the wall with his strong arms. My heart was racing like crazy, and I could feel his too. We were so close that our faces were only inches apart, and the warmth of his breath made me blush even more, so I accidentally let out a squeal. Thankfully, before things could get any more awkward, the guard was gone. Don't even think of breathing a single word about this. Weirdly, this time his words didn't hurt at all. Maybe because I knew, beneath his tough jock exterior, he had his own secret, just like me. I like your painting, so no need to hide it. Austin stopped for a bit, then kept walking. But I'm sure I caught a smile. After that day, he started to behave quite differently. More gently. He no longer went berserk at me, but helped me get through the training instead so I could catch up with the other players. I just had my first successful kick. Yay! I turned around to cheer with Austin, but out of nowhere, the ball came hurtling right at me, and he instantly caught it with one hand, while the other held me by the waist. Okay, that was awkward. This week, there'd be a senior prom at school, and Beatrix insisted we go. Of course, I gave her a no, but she was literally a leech, so I had no other choice. Wear this, Kay. It's a matching set. It'll be so lame if I wear this alone, please. Fine, but only because you've given me no choice. Yay, love ya. Eek. Wow, it smelled so good. What if I put it on? But wait, what about Selena? 
Forget it. It's not like she'll be at the prom. YOLO! I stepped into the ballroom with this gorgeous outfit on, my blue eyes, and the necklace my mom gave me. Everyone jaw-dropped as soon as they saw me, and that's when I noticed Austin coming towards me. Hey, you look different tonight. Uh, I mean in a good way. Wanna dance? Sorry, girls' time. Kaylee, look at the tasty food corner. Told you we had to come here. Oh, Beatrix, my friend here is starving. Can you show him where to grab a bite? Wow, sure, handsome. We have cupcakes, biscuits, uh, and even brownies. Isn't this called choosing boys over friends? <laughs> Good for her, anyway. <laughs> then Austin gently led me in the waltz. He looked exactly like a prince from a fairy tale. As we fell in step, letting the rhythm control our movements, I felt my whole body tingle. The sparks were definitely flying. But suddenly, the music changed into trance. We looked into each other's eyes for a second, then, hand in hand, ran across the crowd until we got outside. I could never imagine a tomboy could become like this. Actually, I'm not a tomboy. What do you mean? That's when I decided to tell him everything about how I was obsessed with girly things, but had to suppress it all my life. It felt so good to let it all out after burying it the whole time, and Austin was such a good listener. Wow, Kaylee, I'm so sorry. Actually, I've also had to hide my passion for arts to help my father's business too. So what you said to me the other day really opened up something in me. So things were not easy for him either, huh? Suddenly, he pulled out a sketchbook and started drawing me. I wish this moment would last forever. His face then went all serious, but not in a cold way as usual, but instead beaming with passion. Our eyes met, and I thought my heart was going to jump out of my chest. And yes, I hoped this moment would last forever too. Then suddenly, he leaned closer to fix my hair. I was ready for a kiss. Then, Kaylee! Selena, how did she find out about this? Man, you know what's coming next. I can't believe you'd be this reckless. You're not my mom, and not every boy is like my dad. You were wrong. Mind your manners. Get changed now. Right then, Mrs. Sanchez came to interrupt us. Hang on. Are her eyes blue? And what's this? Uh, um, don't mind her. I bought this half price at the swap meet, ma'am. Then she signaled for me to flee the scene. If mom were here, she'd understand the way I feel. Blinking back tears, I suddenly felt a warm hand on my shoulder. Are you alright? I saw you leave with Austin. Did he cut your hair? It looks shorter. I'm okay, Beatrix. Oh wow, I have a similar necklace that my dad gave to me. This was from my dad too, except that I don't actually know who he is. Maybe your dad is my dad? <laughs> Zero for the joke, Beatrix. Oh, but why did Selena lie about the necklace to Miss Sanchez? So I went to find Selena right after, and she told me the most shocking thing ever. Beatrix's dad, the former master here, was actually my dad. He seduced mom, who used to be a maid here too. When Mrs. Sanchez found out, both of them were kicked out of the house. Then knowing mom was having me, he dumped her right away. Selena was afraid Mrs. Sanchez could see mom in me, and so she had to force me to disguise myself. Wow, this was seriously messed up. Keep your identity a secret by all means or we're doomed. Understand? I was in complete shock, but I knew I had to be more careful from then on. For the whole week after, Mrs. Sanchez seemed to be in a good mood. One day, she even asked me to go shopping with her. But a wedding dress studio? Is there a wedding coming, ma'am? Yes, and it's yours, you filth. You have to pay for your mom's karma for stealing my husband. So she knew everything? I tried to bolt away, but immediately got caught. Then she took me to this luxurious house, and guess who I met? Kaylee, what are you doing here? Uh, Austin? W what? What do you want? I was still bewildered when a man pushed a boy in a wheelchair into the living room. Hi, Mr. Fisher. About our arrangement, this is the bride here. She and Ivan here will make the perfect couple. Hope you like this gift as my thanks for your favor. My blessings for the marriage and your family. Dad, what is she talking about? Ivan will get married to this girl. I've already settled everything so that Ivan can have a bright future without worrying about anything. Excuse me? I've had to put aside my art dream to enroll in business school, as you wished, and now you want to control my brother's life too? I object to this marriage, because I love her! Then he pulled me away, leaving Mr. Fisher frozen in shock. Kaylee, I'm so sorry you had to meet my dad in such an awful way. I promise to never let anyone treat you like this again. No worries. I have to thank you instead. Your words really woke up the courage in me. 
Austin offered to help me talk things out, but it's time for me to fight for my own good. I came back home to see Mrs. Sanchez flying into a rage. How dare you bring your face back into this house! You cruel woman! I will not marry someone else just to pay off your debt! Right at that moment, Selena walked in, and she literally turned into a bull. How dare you do that to my child! I had to stop her from lunging towards Mrs. Sanchez. So how about what you all have done to me? Do you know what I've been through all these years? Her mom stole my husband, and you just expect me to put it aside? Then, she collapsed and burst into tears. Suddenly, I felt bad for her. I'm sorry for everything that happened to you, but it doesn't mean you have to punish yourself with it or grant yourself the right to dictate others like that. She owes you nothing, and you have no right to control others' lives. Right after that, Selena and I packed our stuff and left the house. Walking through that door, we felt more free than ever before. After all that drama, it took us some time to get our lives back on track. From all the money Selena had saved working as a maid, she was able to open her own bakery and take back control of our lives. And so do I. Finally, I'm back to my princess style. But after all those craziest things happened, something never changed. Oh my god, oh my god, we're half-sisters! Yay! Ah, uh, my mom said she felt so guilty about what happened, but asked me to keep it a secret. Oops. And about that guy, you ask? He worked things out with his dad, and guess what? He's in art school now. Okay, now tilt your head to the right. Yeah, like that. Gosh, that dress makes you look like a fairy princess. Who dare to make a princess stay still like a statue for more than one hour? Huh, the charming artist? Shh, it's almost done. I beg your pardon. Hey guys, I'm Feather, and I look just like any other 16-year-old, right? Actually, my life as a teenager is far from ordinary since I have hemophilia, a rare disease in which my blood doesn't clot properly, so even a simple graze could be fatal. My parents are so worried that I might hurt myself that they keep me safely shut away in this mansion. In fact, I've never left it. Money isn't a problem to them as they own this massive energy corporation, so to compensate for me not being able to go outside, they make sure I get anything I ask for. My giant playroom is cool, right? Not only that, but I also own a dressing room with hundreds of cute Lolita outfits. And an enormous pantry full of my favorite snacks that I can enjoy at any time. You see, there's honestly nothing to complain about. Except, I suppose it does get a bit lonely sometimes. Until one morning, I was woken up by a screeching noise coming from downstairs. Are you kidding me? Do you want to burn my throat with this or what? What's going on here? I went over to the living room and was stunned to see a girl sitting way too comfortably on our couch. I was still trying to figure out who she was when she suddenly said, You, standing at the door, get me another glass of cool water. Now. Taken aback, I instinctively went to get her water. Then the girl finally looked up and seemed startled to see me. Oh my, I'm terribly sorry. I thought you were just one of the maids. Turns out she's Katie the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Forger, the two scientists that are collaborating with our family's corporation. My parents arranged for them to stay here to facilitate the research on the upcoming project. When I told her about my life and condition, she seemed really surprised. Oh, Feather, it's as if you live in your own tiny world. There are already flying cars out there, and they've just invented time machines too. You're missing out on so much. Really? How come no one told me about this? <laughs> I'm just joking, silly. Whoa, you weren't kidding about not leaving this place, were you? Then she started telling me about some of her favorite things to do in the outside world, such as watching the latest movies in the cinema, going to the mall where she could actually try things on before buying them, or attending all the fun festivals. It all sounds so cool. We chatted for ages, then I showed Katie around the mansion. Her reaction when seeing my dressing room and the playroom was seriously priceless. <laughs> From then on, I spent lots of time with Katie, but my favorite part about being around her were her stories about school, where she got to learn new things and make a lot of friends. Seeing my excited expression, Katie immediately suggested that I talk to my parents about maybe letting me experience it myself. Actually, it doesn't hurt to try, right? So at dinner, I gathered my courage to say, Mom, Dad, I want to go to school. I understand that you're worried for me, so Katie will come along to protect me. Right, Katie? Oh, yes, that's right. Feather is in good hands, Mr. and Mrs. Adams. 
My parents seemed very hesitant, but after a whole lot of persuading, they finally agreed with conditions. We'll join the most prestigious school in the state and have our own chauffeur. As for Katie, to avoid any incidents occurring, I suggest you get rid of the long nails and jewelry, Katie. We went back to my room after dinner, and I just couldn't hide my excitement. Yes, we'll get to go to school together soon. What should I prepare? What would you recommend? But then I noticed Katie staring in sorrow at her newly done set of nails. I'm so sorry, Katie. Is there anything I can do to make it up to you? It's okay, Feather. What matters is that you're able to go to school, and I'm so happy for you. It's bedtime anyways. I'll head back to my room now. I'm so lucky to have a friend like her. As I was indulging in my thoughts, a familiar voice startled me. Hey, I heard you two are going to school. Are you sure it's safe? Katie doesn't seem all that trustworthy. That is none of your business. You're just jealous that I've made a new friend while you're still lonely, aren't you? In case you're wondering, this guy is Liam, the butler's son. He was my childhood best friend and used to come to the mansion every day for homeschooling and to spend time with me. But we had some petty argument and I hadn't seen him since. Well, at least not until now. He was about to ramble about something else, but I slammed the door in his face. I wasn't going to let him ruin my mood. What I need to think about is my school day that's coming up. Oh my, it's so exciting. I really can't wait. Ah, we are going to Edgewood High today. So I decided to wear my favorite Lolita dress as Katie suggested. Oh, I almost forgot, Mr. Freddy. He's been my best friend since childhood, and of course he had to come along with me on this big day. Katie also said I should try introducing him to everyone. That would help me make new friends faster. Such a brilliant idea. Whoa, we're finally here. Hey, Katie, how do we find our lockers? Hey, Katie, when is lunch? Hey, Katie, do you know who's going to teach us? Oh my god, Feather, stop asking. Everyone's staring. Uh, I didn't even notice. It's probably because we're new. Hi, I'm Feather. Or maybe it's because of your extravagant outfit. Before I could say anything, someone spoke up. That's a lovely dress. Oh, you're right. They do seem to like my dress. <laughs> I waited for everyone in the room to settle, then confidently introduced myself. Hi, everyone. I'm Feather, and this is my best friend, Mr. Freddy. As soon as they saw Mr. Freddy, everyone burst out laughing. I didn't know what was so funny, so I just awkwardly laughed along. After class, I asked Katie why our classmates laughed earlier, and what she told me was unbelievable. They were making fun of me. It's so sad to know, but I guess not everyone can be as nice as Katie. She also told me to dress down next time to attract less unwanted attention. It's a bit upsetting, but I guess I'll have to do what's best. So I listened to Katie's advice and ditched the OTT dress. Just like she said, people actually stopped staring at me. Here, hold this. You look really good holding books. Huh? That sounds kind of weird. But it's fine, though. She probably wanted my help but was just too shy to ask. After the morning classes, I went to buy a bunch of lollipops, and that might look odd to Katie, so I let her know about how lollies are my special anxiety remedy. People here seem to be quite judgy, which got me a bit uneasy. You want one? Aw, poor you, but no thanks. By the way, I'll have lunch with David today, you know, the cute jock in our math class. So you're on your own this noon, okay? Then she quickly left without waiting for my response. I didn't know having lunch alone was so boring. Everyone has their own group, except for this one guy wearing a hoodie and a mask. Hi, can I join you? But he didn't even reply, just stood up and moved to another seat. Did, did I do something wrong? Feeling the anxiety taking over, I immediately took a lollipop to calm myself down. And it's doing a wonderful job at making me feel better. But suddenly, someone snatched it out of my hand. I chased after him, but slipped on someone's foot and fell hard on the floor. Panicked, I burst out crying, and I heard the guy that took my candy say, Huh, huh, feather the toddler. Then everyone laughed at me again. Luckily, a guy spoke up. Stop this nonsense. What are you going to do if she's injured? Oh, wait, it's the weird guy from lunch. He checked on me to make sure everything was fine, then quietly went back to his seat. I didn't even have the chance to ask for his name before the teacher came in. This guy was so strange, but there was one thing I didn't understand. Why was Katie also laughing? Back home, Katie came to find me in the playroom, and I questioned her about the incident earlier, and she quickly apologized as she thought they were just joking. She then suggested going shopping and offered to buy me something to cheer me up, and so I agreed immediately. We went to the mall the next morning, and I had the best time. We had iced coffee and some delicious pudding. Katie also got me an adorable little hair clip, and so I bought her a bunch of new clothes in return. 
We were about to head home when Katie said, Hey Feather, um, I have a cousin whose sneakers are falling apart. Would it be okay if you helped me get him a new pair? Of course, anything for my best friend. Making my best friend happy was the most wonderful feeling in the world. I'm so grateful to have such a lovely person like her to come into my life. But then the next day, I walked into class to see Katie being all lovey-dovey with the boy who took my lollipop. So that's the David that she mentioned, and on his feet were the brand new sneakers that were supposed to be for her cousin. Why is he wearing the shoes I bought? Then Katie pulled me outside and explained profusely, Feather, calm down. The, the shoes were too big for my cousin, so I gave them to David. I didn't lie to you, I promise. Fine. Please just don't let me see him wearing them again. I felt really bad since Katie seemed really sad after hearing what I said. At that moment, David approached me. What's up, toddler? You got a problem with my new kicks? I froze in fear. Then, thankfully, an announcement came through the speaker. David Peterson, please come to the principal's office immediately. Turns out he's in trouble for spray painting a teacher's car. At least someone already helped me teach him a lesson, but that wasn't all. A few more of my classmates also got detention for cheating on the math quiz yesterday, while some others got caught skipping classes. It was such a crazy morning. It's as if someone was trying to play the hero here. Finally, it's lunch break. Hoped things would be better in the afternoon, but... Huh? What is this? A poster of me? It also says underneath, Feather the toddler is the snitch. Katie took a look at it and said that the best way to deal with these kinds of jokes was just to play along. Um, I'm not sure about that, but it seems like the only way now. And so, I climbed on an empty chair in the cafeteria and started speaking loud and clear. Mm, may I have everyone's attention, please? Hi, I am Feather the Toddler, and I am proud of it. Instead of getting the response I'd hoped for, what I got back was food. The whole cafeteria was laughing and throwing food at me. I covered my face, trying to dodge it, but the floor got slippery from all the greasy food, so I ended up falling. Oh no, I scratched myself. I could only lay on the ground out of pain. People finally stopped as they saw me bleed. All I could vaguely hear was a familiar voice calling my name. I woke up in the hospital to find Liam sitting next to me. Feather, you're awake. Do you feel pain anywhere? Well, Liam? Why are you here? Where's Katie? Katie? You're still worried about Katie? She's the one who was behind all this. She told the principal about your classmates and told everyone it was you to make them hate you. What? How is that possible? Turns out, the guy who was always wearing a hoodie and mask was Liam. Liam had always been suspecting something shady in Katie's behavior. So, after failing in warning me about her, he decided to look out for me himself instead. I cried and tried to hug him, despite the pain on my arm. Then, Liam showed me a shocking video of Katie talking trash about me to everyone. Oh, why was Feather carrying my books, you ask? It's because her parents work for my family's corporation, and she'll do anything I tell her to, as long as I give her some money. <laughs> Seeing the anger and also disappointment in my eyes, Liam calmed me down and said he had a plan to expose my so-called best friend. When I returned to school a few days later, I stormed straight over to Katie. It's you! You're behind it all! I already know everything. <laughs> Stop being ridiculous, Feather. You got busted and now you're trying to blame me. Drop the act. No one's falling for it. At the end of class, Katie suddenly gathered everyone. People, head over to the lecture hall. I have something very interesting to show you guys. Oh boy, I wonder what else she has planned. Liam and I quickly followed the crowd and found Katie standing on stage. Oh, Feather, I'm glad you're here. This is about you, after all. The screen started playing a video of me sitting on my swing, playing with my dolls, and taking armfuls of candy out of the pantry. Do you see that, everyone? Feather is just a toddler in a teenager's body. Such a weirdo. I was waiting for everyone to start laughing, but the crowd stayed completely silent. Then Katie hesitantly continued, Not only that, she's also the poser who snitched on us. Then, to her surprise, the angry crowd started booing and shouting at Katie, saying she is the evil snitch. Then they turned to me. Your rooms are actually pretty cool. I wish I had a snack pantry like that. It's so awesome. Katie sounded panicked as she continued talking more trash stuff about me, but no one listened. Turns out, Liam had set up a group chat in which he'd posted proof of Katie's actions, including the video of her talking to David, and also pictures of her coyly walking out of the principal's office after she must have snitched on everyone, and her putting up that mean poster about me. Katie, you're the one embarrassing yourself. Everyone knows that you're a snake in the grass. 
I trusted you, and what I get back are all these lies and schemes. I feel so ashamed for ever calling you a friend. As Katie looked around at the unimpressed-looking crowd, she realized her game was up and quickly fled the scene. Later on, we arrived home to see my angry-looking parents standing next to Katie's mom and dad, who had all their luggage packed ready to move out. Yes, Liam had already told them everything. In the end, Katie's parents made her apologize to me. Only after a lot of persuading did my parents let them keep their jobs. I never saw Katie again, but I did make a bunch of new friends that I invite around sometimes. The snack pantry is a big hit. <laughs> now, I wear whatever I like without worrying about being judged. Most of all, I'm enjoying my school life, and it's all thanks to the help of my trusty soulmate, Liam. Hi, I'm Donna, an influencer extraordinaire and soon-to-be supermodel. My family are my biggest supporters. Look, there's my sister Charlotte. Even though my parents are busy running the family corporation, they buy me whatever I want. This includes this spectacular dress for the upcoming Elite Model Look Contest. Girls, get ready! We're eating out tonight! Yay! Charlotte just helped Dad secure another business contract, so it's time to celebrate! At the restaurant, Mom, Dad, and Charlotte walked ahead while I showed my 329,587 followers around. My fans even commented that I should compete for Miss USA. Suddenly, someone bumped into me, causing me to drop my phone. Oh no! My live stream's ended, and it's all his fault! Idiot, you ruined my live stream. Now my fans will think I'm rude and unfollow me. Are you walking with your eyes closed? Sorry, I didn't mean to. Let me make it up for you. Donna the Fabulous? Okay, you've just got one more follower. What a jinx. He better stay out of my sight. But as soon as I reached our table, I saw his face again. Why is he here? Donna, this is Matthew, our new finance director. Oh, how important. But not as much as live streaming, right? Who does he think he is? Charlotte even laughed at his stupid joke. Speaking of which, Donna, you're going to study business from now on. Time to stop those modeling, live streaming things. What? But why? You've always supported my dreams before. But Dad just ignored me and chatted with Matthew. Dad was being so unreasonable. Everything was fine until that Matthew guy showed up. Charlotte comforted me and suggested we attend business classes for me while I prepared for the modeling contest. What a brilliant idea! Oh, I love my amazing quick-witted sister! I then put all of my focus into practicing for the contest. But Matthew kept on disturbing me with his nonsense. He even sent me a picture of wedding rings saying, Are these okay? Think they'll match us? I frantically called him to ask him what all the gibberish was about. Hasn't your dad told you yet? We're getting engaged and taking charge of the company together. What on earth is this guy saying? Since when was I expected to marry some guy I barely knew and take over a business I had no interest in? Dad should have some explanation for this. Upon arriving home, I confronted Dad, but he just sighed and said he was planning on telling me himself. But you can't just dictate my career and who I marry. Donna, I only want the best for you. But Dad, Donna didn't even attend her business classes and is still indulging in her nonsense fashion club. How can you expect her to handle the company? Oh no, why is she telling him that? Was she trying to help me? She's right, Dad. I have no interest in business at all. I can't. If that's the case, then you can start as vice president and get some hands-on experience. And you, Charlotte, you'll be Donna's personal assistant and support her. No! This is not how you want it to turn out. Dad used to love us both, but now he didn't even listen. Ugh, yes, Charlotte, my savior. She would surely know what to do. I can't believe it. I've tried so hard to prove myself, only to have everything given to a simple-minded fool like you. S simple minded That's what you really think of me? Well, I guess I just gotta take my new position to show her how simple-minded I am then. So the next morning, I dolled up and strut to the company lobby under a different name, Miss Vice President. Huh, look at those gawking eyes wishing they could escape from the boring suits. Matthew was there too, and... was he... Laughing? Suddenly, my heel got tangled up in my dress and I tripped over. What a disaster. Matthew offered me his hand and asked if I was okay. Who needs his help? And all the silly chatters? Just wait and see. And by that, I mean now. Matthew introduced me to the company's core members and announced some new strategic goals for the company. ROI, margin, accounts. Jeez, what kind of language is he speaking?
After what seemed like an eternity, he asked if anyone wanted to add anything. Aha! I, of course, couldn't miss a chance to show my leadership. This office is seriously lacking some colors. Violet blinds would be a good start, and some motivational pictures really help boost productivity. Oh, you mean putting up motivational quotes? Oh, please, no. Motivation comes from the all-time fashion greats. You know, Bella Hadid, Tyra Banks, Kendall Jenner. Everyone gawped at me, while Charlotte furiously signaled me to stop. Everyone here is so boring! Ugh, alright, I'll stop then. My first day was then followed by tedious meetings and schedules. Everyone was talking gibberish and making me sign a bunch of papers. But every cloud has a silver lining, and for a foodie like me, that's dinner meetings. These people really know how to enjoy life, don't they? But before I could even have my first bite, they all started asking me about proposal this and project that. Fortunately, Matthew was there to save the day. Honestly, he seems pretty good at his job, and he's quite attractive when focused. Oh yeah, work. I gotta contribute my own talents at work too. So, the next day, I put the sign on my door, then sat back and watched my favorite fashion show. Ooh, look at those dazzling dresses. One day, I'd be walking the runway in a gown like that, not sitting here surrounded by confusing numbers and papers. Later, when I opened the door, an endless line of people was already waiting for me. Jeez, can't this company with all these brilliant brains function without me? Right then, Charlotte came dragging me away. What happened? Oh gosh, I didn't know that my computer was connected to the meeting room's projector, so everyone had been watching Project Runaway with me. Matthew was in the conference room too. Why didn't he fix it? Okay, everyone. We should thank our cute boss for giving us a lot of ideas for our problems. He finished the meeting and let them out, but Charlotte was still standing there fuming at me. Cute? There is nothing cute about it. Don't get any wrong ideas that he likes you. Wait for me, Maddie. What is with that attitude? Oh, right. I've seen the gooey-eyed look she gives Matthew. Does she have feelings for him? Before I could pry further, I was sent to Millen for another stupid meeting. Feeling bored, I watched a fashion show to kill time when someone startled me from my side. I personally think this collection is overrated. Oh, sorry if I scared you. I'm Brian. He then gave me his business card and, wow, he's the CEO of a modeling firm in France. Are you coming to the fashion week too? I wish. I actually came for work. <sighs> oh, what a pity. There's a modeling contest this week. I can tell a true beauty like you is destined for the crown. I missed so many chances to be on the runway. If I make it this time, maybe mom and dad will see how serious I am about modeling. This is too amazing of an offer to refuse. Brian, I'm coming with you. At the show, I made sure my phone was off so I could truly immerse myself in all the glamour of the newest fall collection. Brian then kept his word and took me to the audition. I was super nervous at first, but unexpectedly... Everyone else looked so amateur. Meanwhile, I strutted like a pro, confident that this time I would get an offer. But for now, reality was calling. <sighs> as soon as I turned on my phone, a zillion missed calls from Dad and Matthew popped up. This screamed trouble, so I quickly got Brian's contacts and returned home. There, Charlotte went all banshee shrieking mode on me, accusing me of being irresponsible and selfish for skipping the important meeting. Dad, if you don't do something about this, Donna will destroy the company you've worked so hard to build. That's right. But instead of yelling at her, you should have been there to help out. I'm so disappointed in you, Charlotte. Oh God, Charlotte's face turned pale immediately. Dad should be scolding me, not her. Feeling a little bad for Charlotte, the next day I went to talk to her, but it sounded like she was arguing with someone inside. I walked in to see Matthew sitting there with loads of pictures of Brian and me. We're still, in Charlotte's words, it looked like we were dating. A few photos can't change the fact that we're getting engaged. He then grabbed my hand and pulled me outside, leaving a stunned Charlotte behind. How are you so sure that I'm not seeing someone else? It's just a feeling. Or maybe it's just my hope, because I... What did he mean by hope? And holy shrimp, why is my heart beating so crazy? What a day. I thought it was finally over when Dad slammed the pictures of me and Brian down in front of me. He was so mad at me, he decided our engagement would be tomorrow instead of a month, as planned. But I haven't mentally prepared for this. So here I am, at my engagement ceremony, waiting for my fiancé to arrive. Ha, <laughs> just kidding. Actually, Brian called me last minute to tell me the best news ever. 
a fashion brand had chosen me as their ambassador. I needed to fly over for some paperwork. Thanks to him, I successfully escaped the engagement and flew to Milan to meet up with him. Finally, I got to pursue my long-repressed dream in my favorite city and not pay heed to my dad's ridiculous orders. Yay! As I woke up the next morning, I eagerly reached for my phone to call Brian, but... Huh? Where was it? I looked at the nightstand, but my passport, my wallet, and all of my stuff had disappeared. I dashed to the reception asking for Brian's room, but they all shook their heads saying there was no one by that name staying there. Frantic, I used their computer and checked the website for his phone number, but it kept saying error. Then I looked up any information about the contest, but found Zilch. How could he do this to me? I trusted him. Now I'm in a foreign country, all alone, and with no money. What am I going to do? I can't just call Dad to come get me. And neither can I call Charlotte. There's only one person I could contact right now. So I called Matthew, and he flew over immediately. We were walking along the Navili Canal to get some dinner before heading back. I thought he would be furious right now because I ran away from our engagement, but he was just quiet the whole time. So, is it okay for you to suddenly come here? I mean, work and stuff, you know? It's alright. You come first. Everything else comes after. That's sweet of him, but I needed to make sure he didn't get the wrong message. I called for your help, but that doesn't mean I want to get engaged. I'm... I'm not ready to come in. At first, I wanted this marriage to happen, but now I'm not so sure anymore. Oh my. Did me running away from the engagement upset him that much? As we stepped through the door, I saw Mom, Dad, and Charlotte waiting for us. Charlotte instantly bombarded me with her dolphin frequency yelling. Seeing how much they worried about me, how irresponsible and terrible I was. You should have won an Oscar for your acting, Charlotte. Unfortunately, your partner played you this time. Acting? And what partner? Turns out Charlotte was the one behind all of this. She hired Brian from the beginning to make me look bad in my parents' eyes. She also made sure my engagement with Matthew didn't go as planned. Everything played out just as she'd wanted, but she didn't think Brian's greed would get the best of him. He called Matthew, saying he was holding me for ransom. And during the call, the idiot fraud accidentally brought up Charlotte. We were all too shook to even speak. When Charlotte burst out crying, You're right! It was me all along! She's never done anything useful, yet got everything meant for me! Mom! Dad! If you needed someone to take care of the company and marry Maddie, why her? Why not me? You haven't told them anything this whole time? I was still processing everything when my dad sighed and said, I was going to tell you both when the time felt right, but seeing you pitting against each other like this hurts me so much. Actually, Donna, we're not your biological parents. Turns out, Dad was my parents' private lawyer and the company belonged to my real parents, not to Dad. But then, my parents got into a terrible accident, and during their last minutes, they gave the company, and me, over to him. They asked Dad to raise me properly and arrange for me to marry Matthew as a part of their deal with Matthew's parents. Growing up and seeing me so passionate about modeling, Dad was going to let Charlotte run the company and let me live my life how I wanted to. But then Matthew and his family showed up and insisted we get engaged according to the deal. Dad had no choice but to respect them and carry out my parents' will. So, my current beloved mom and dad are not my actual family? Worse still, my biological parents had both passed away. Donna, we hope you understand. Though we're not related, we have always loved you as our daughter. This is very hard for us, too. I looked at mom and dad, the ones who had always loved and cared for me. Mom, dad, just like you two. I'm sure my parents would want me to do what makes me happy. Though, I am the lawful heiress of the company. I can only do harm to it. So, I hope you understand, and let Charlotte take over it. She's a better suit than me. That's right. You cannot force someone into doing something they don't like. Neither can you force someone into love. Woohoo! No more boring office job. Instead, I've put all my energy into elite model look. And here I am today. You've got this, Donna. I confidently strutted down the runway with Mom, Dad, and Charlotte cheering from the audience. And when I finished my part, I joined my family and nervously waited for the MC to announce the chosen ones. Samantha Friske, Amelia Davis, and Donna Rossi! Yes! I've made it! I've been waiting for this day for so long! Suddenly, I spotted Matthew coming towards us. Congratulations, Donna. I knew you'd get it. Thank you for coming. I know love cannot be forced, nor should I rush it, but... Whenever you're ready. Donna, will you go out with me? How about... now?